A very good morning and welcome to the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. 66 countries represented, 37,000 runners, record entries, and this event was first introduced to follow the blue line of the Sydney 2000 Olympic Games. It's a gold label status event. One of the best marathons in the world sits alongside London, New York and Boston and has raised nearly $20 million for charity. Great conditions, wonderful day here in Sydney. Man sitting next to me, an Aussie marathon icon, gold, silver and bronze medalist across four Commonwealth Games and a bronze at the World Championship. Steve Monaghetti, a very good morning. Great to be here, Ian. Another exciting day. Looking forward to bringing you a terrific event. What a wonderful view we have there and uh, looking forward to wonderful, wonderful conditions and running spectacular here in Sydney. Also in commentary, a gold medalist at the Olympic Games in the 800 metres, bronze in the 1500, gold at the World Cup, European Championships and Commonwealth Games, one of the great rivalries of the 80s with now Lord Sebastian Coe. That is Steve Ovet. Great to be here, Ian, and look at that absolutely magnificent day for running here at the festival. And the conditions, as uh, Steve just said, absolutely perfect for the marathon. So we're looking there at the start of the half marathon. You can see the start list. Let's have a look at some of our elite runners as a part of the four and a half thousand runners in the marathon. And I think it's interesting there, the range of countries, Kenya, Ethiopia, Uganda, Americans and our Aussies represented New Zealand as well. So a good, good cross section of athletes from around the marathon running world. Well, you can always say it's going to be a big challenge for the African nations there, but Eggleston for the United States, obviously one to watch as well, I think. Yeah, no, I think the Japanese always go well here too, Steve, so I'd keep an eye on the Japanese runners, but Kenya, we know, dominate world marathon running, uh, so we'll see how that pans out today. And the women, the same, really. I think we see probably the Kenyans. I think in the women's race and uh, some, uh, some really well credentialed sub 230 marathon times in the way the women's field's actually looking for, it'll be a good race so I'm really looking forward to that and the thing also it's the Australian marathon championships as well so some of the Australians there listed will also be going out to try and do well in the event so those runners getting ready at the Bradfield Park area of course and you can see the start, there'd be some nervous anticipation here ahead of the marathon. You can see our elite runners at the front of the field and about to get underway. Monas, what's actually going through the mine now with 42 kilometres ahead? Beautiful conditions for the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. Are oh, you just hoping that it, today's your day and that everything comes together? And you've done it, all the work. It's really, you know, the nerves. Is it good nerves, bad nerves? You know, you want to try to use them to have a positive experience. But to be honest, you just want the, the gun to go and you want to get on your way because you can't affect the result while you're standing on the start line. Well, let's have a look at the journey that is ahead Ahead of them, of course, all the runners get to go over the bridge. We've got the half marathon, the bridge and the family run as well. And you can see going past the beautiful SCG and Sporting Precinct before turning around at Centennial Park. They'll wind their way through the wonderful parklands of Sydney. Blue skies abound then to the halfway mark as they turn and set sail for home all the way back through the CBD. And they will wind their way round through Piermont, Darling Harbour, and then, of course, they will get the finish line. They'll be able to see it as they work their way around this harbour area to finish in the forecourt of the beautiful Sydney Opera House as well. Circular Quay, the final post as they come through. There's what is ahead for our marathon runners. And I think, I think you see the Harbour Bridge and the Opera House from a long way out. You, you know where you want to go, but you just want to get there. We all know it's 42.2k, so... They'll have it, uh, all their plans ready to go. Well, I must admit, when we arrived yesterday, the temperature was 32 degrees here, so it's cooled down perfectly, really, for the runners today. You would have been worried yesterday, so there's certainly, and you know, that 16, 17 degrees, right now it's not up to that temperature, so pretty much ideal temperature. Wonderful opportunity for a lot of Australian runners to run against some of the world's best. As we said, 66 countries represented here in the gold label status event and it's fantastic to uh, have so many from uh, around the world here. here Our hands go. on the watches. Just about to get the gun. And we're underway in the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival Marathon 
beautiful conditions and of course 42 kilometers ahead for these runners from all over the globe taking part some of them local of course they build up for this one plenty of people coming from interstate as well wonderful festive atmosphere and that's what i often talk about that sometimes this is the the icing on the cake the journey's all the training and you like to i know it's they've still got you know four or five hours of running but i like to think that when you're on the start line that's a success and now you can enjoy the day there's we, our construction worker was it we did <laughs> and we might catch up with them a little oh, bit later dear. as well but we've got a couple of runners that are representing opportunities for the Guinness World Records it's all fully sanctioned and of course the uh, Blackmore Sydney Running Festival Marathon is one of those sanctioned around the world so there's people in all sorts of get up trying to achieve a world record and we did see our construction worker nice and early looks like we've got a little bit of a margin with some of our elite runners well, as you expect, the elite runners just coming to the fore and getting themselves clear of the rest of the field, making sure they've got an easy path. Uh, but it's early days, as Steve would uh, say. In a marathon, it's not about the start, it's about the finish, obviously. And there's a long 42 k's to stretch out to make sure that you get the tactics right. Yeah, and you, you want to settle in early and get in a pack, really. If you're running by yourself this early, it's a very long way. So you're really just trying to find your rhythm early in the race. See a lot of runners there heading off on their journey, giving us a wave. And Great also, to see, isn't it? When you, yes, I say, when you see these runners coming through, and also you might even see a couple of runners that have got flags on them, and they're pacemakers for the rest of the field, making sure that they run at the pace that they want to, to get their best personal best. I mean, it's a, it's a challenge for everybody, not just the elite runners. And that's a responsibility, but it also is a great addition to marathons around the world in, in well, fairly recent years, and they run at exactly that pace, and hope, because you can get a bit carried away on the day might go a bit hard early so to have those paces running at exactly the pace that you, you know is uh, is a good measuring point for a lot of these runners so this is Kim Boy from Kenya and uh, his best uh, best marathon time at 207 34 which he achieved in Frankfurt so uh, he's obviously wanting to be able to get out early and, and make the pace and have a look at him because he's he's run yeah. under 273 times and under 210 would you believe seven times so his credentials are he's probably you know on paper he'd be the the clear favorite going into the race today so expect him to be prominent for a lot of the event well, I think that the idea from someone like Ken Boy is to get out front and to really make it uh, a statement right from the word go, making sure that, you know, if he's the quality man in the field, then the others have got to get up to him and keep that rhythm going, which is damn hard if you're that sort of calibre of athlete. Which is interesting, Steve, because I would be thinking he'd be sitting back because he's got nothing. <laughs> he's not in a hurry. He's been here before. He knows what it what it's all about. So, But maybe that he wants to get the pace rolling a little bit because he's obviously faster than the other guys. But as a, as, a, as a marathon runner yourself, you must have a natural rhythm that you run and this man is, is capable of, of sub sort of you know two eight so that's a yep. different class of rhythm to some of the other athletes so he might be thinking i'm just going to run my own race simple as that yeah which is that's probably that's a good it's good in theory it doesn't happen in practice all that often because you're in your mind you want to have the easiest victory you can today so it's you're thinking about how you're going to get out and make sure that the pace is fast enough to to make sure you do win but you're not you're sparing that energy for as long as you can well we're panning back now to the women in the race there's Kabaris just ahead there of Jep, Jep 2 I think it is of Kenya on the outside they're the, the class athletes in this race and again they're doing exactly the same as the men they're bunching together and they're just taking the first part of the race looking at each other gauging how everybody else is feeling so early days, but to the top women there at the four. Yeah, and normally the Kenyan women will pack up and lead, and we may see the Ethiopians just sitting in behind, but uh, that's that's not unusual for the Kenyan women to be together at the front. Wonderful numbers, as we said, 37,000, over 37,000 record entries for today, and in the marathon we could see some already coming over the start uh, line. 4,379 competitors in the marathon for this morning here at the Blackmore's Sydney Running Festival as the lead group make their way onto the famous Sydney Harbour Bridge. Well, no traffic on the bridge and that's a wonderful sight really. But there you see the athletes just starting to stretch out now. I always love an aerial shot because you can get a, a bit of a sense of their different styles and techniques and how efficient they are running over the ground. And, yeah, I think are, that'll be a pack that'll form pretty quickly. So we'll probably have 10 or so in that lead pack, which is what I'd expect. Gabaras just edging ahead of uh, 
Jet too on the outside there, Kibar as well. She was uh, she's run some decent times, especially in the half marathon, marathon best of 2:26. So yes, she's a sort of class athlete you'd expect to be leading uh, early on in this race. Just overtaking some of the uh, men now. They look like they're rolling actually, the women um, across the bridge there. So yeah, maybe they're uh, they're getting going. I think they're um, into a bit of a rhythm pretty early on. You can see the flags at the top of the bridge. It is a little bit windy, especially down at the harbour side of things. So there's going to be a bit, a bit of a reluctance to run hard into that wind at the beginning. But if it's with them some parts of the course, then they'll take advantage of that, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, well, that's, you, you know, the Sydney Marathon runs around the harbour. It's always going to be, it's, it'll be windy. It'll either be with you or against you. So, again, that, that comes into play for how hard you go and which sections of the course you want to push into. I think that's the Nissan lead car just, just taking them over the bridge now. And uh, you can just see the, there's our camera crew just tracking them on the outside, perfect to position to get the uh, atmosphere of that lead group. So we'll wait until they come to about the 5K mark a bit later on to see what sort of pace they're running. But they look as if they're moving pretty fast at the moment. Yeah, no, I, I, did I say 10? I think I counted 10. That was a good guess. I reckon there's 10 in that lead pack early, and that's a, that's a good round number. So. so the athletes moving across the Sydney Harbour Bridge at the moment, and, of course, this is one of the great benefits of this marathon an opportunity for everyone and it doesn't matter which marathon you're doing or which running event you're doing the family run the bridge run the half marathon you get to cross this absolutely iconic structure over the sydney harbour on our right of screen there another jap tall japanese runner unusually tall for a japanese um Makino. he's um, he's looking pretty aggressive he's he's not one of the favorites he's got a about a 2.17 PB. So it suggests to me, Steve, that they may not be rolling along too quickly out the front at yeah, the moment. Yeah, maybe not, but they've got a great tradition in this race. They've won it for the last three times, the Japanese. So they know what they're doing. They've, they've, they've planned it, I'm sure. Maybe he's just taking the pace out to help some of the other teammates in the, in the pack there just behind, or whether he's just realising that you can actually run at this pace fairly comfortably. Yeah, they've got a great history here, haven't they? See, so we, we underestimate the Japanese. I think because the, you know, the time works out well for them they come down here it's a couple of hours time difference normally whereas you know a lot of the africans are traveling around the world and coming across and may have only got in last night and travel can be an issue so the japanese have got a really good record here that louise wellings is also a part of our commentary team we'll be checking in with her very very shortly a finalist in the 5000 meters and 10000 meters at the rio olympics and the highest placed australian ever in that event in the 10000 so we'll be checking in with Aloise throughout the broadcast and she'll be talking to lots of interesting people and also uh, great supporters as well we'll be doing that shortly well, i just saw a picture of scott westcott i think back there in our last shot the australian just tailing off a little bit from this lead group and you can see now that they're starting to uh, spread it a little bit more yes scotty's he's, he's a great fella and um doing a good job i think he wanted to run just around 220 today i think he's i think i, think I can officially say i think he was the oldest debut at the olympics he was in the rio team at i think he's 40 at the time so um scotty's a terrific got a great history and a lot of australians out there would would know the name scotty westcott we do, of course, appreciate the support of Blackmores. They have been long-term supporters of this great event. Let's check in with Eloise Wellings. I'm down here with Richard Hemphrey from the CEO of Blackmores. Richard, why is the partnership with the Sydney Running Festival so important to Blackmores? Well, look, we've been we've been sponsoring the Sydney Running Festival for 15 years now, and we just love it. It's so great to kind of get people out moving and and to see to see so many people getting active, taking part. And whether you're a whether you're a marathon runner or just a weekend a weekend warrior or just a, a, mum, or, a mum or dad with a with a pushchair, there's an event for everyone. So it's just brilliant. And how many people have we got registered this year for this year's event? We have a record field this year, over 37,000 people, and we're really excited about that. Wow, amazing. And how many times have you run this event? So it's been my 10th year this year. So I've done a couple of half marathons, but I'm doing the 10K this year. 10K bridge run. Well, we'll see you at the finish line. Good luck. You will. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers, Louise. Of course, if you're just waking up and you think this is something I'd like to do, 2019 entries are now open sydneyrunningfestival.com.au if you'd like to be a part of it for next year and as i said we do appreciate the support of richard and the whole crew at blackmores and you will see there 
pop up occasionally that um, speed monitor, so Garmin Speed, that gives you some idea of how quick they're running and for, uh, for converts, so 20k an hour is 3 minute k, so they're, they're rolling along at, um, was it about, I reckon they're running about 315 kilometre pace at this point in time, so that's yeah. solid, it's okay. Yeah. And well, it's finding their way a bit, I think. They've gone over the bridge, up and down there, and they're now going up a little bit of an incline as well. It's it's a tough course at some stages around this uh, 42k. Ken Boy there leading. I mean, he's run 2.11 already this year, and it's when he finished second. So he's a class athlete, as we said before, and he knows what he's doing. He's pacing himself well. Yeah. And uh, I think there's some beautiful parts of this. Got a little bit hilly early and hilly... Um, at the back end, but uh, through the CBD, but out Centennial Park, and, and it's beautiful running out through the parklands around Sydney City. Well, the women are still bunched together, not much happening there, not, not really spreading out early, but that's good. They're taking their time. It's a long, long way a marathon. You don't want to be going out too hard and just uh, maybe overcooking it a little bit too early. So, yes, they're, they're just tagging along. And they look very relaxed. Oh, is, they're always Kenyan females especially tend to have a higher arm action, but um, look at their running techniques. Very, very efficient compared to uh, the male they're running, Japanese runner with slightly lower arm action, but they look very relaxed. That's Ken Boy. As you say, look at that beautiful economic style almost a shuffle it's a fast shuffle but you can see the way he's covering the ground and it's all about efficiency you know that's you you've got a certain amount of energy and training in the bank and you've got to get that over 42 kilometers which is it's no easy task so you want to save it especially early the yeah, coaches on the inside they're also looking very comfortable looking at each other a little bit of glance every now and again they're checking each other out even this early stage of the race we are underway, four and a half thousand competitors in the marathon. You're watching the Blackmores Sydney Running Festival. So the elite runners, Kim Boyd out there and it looks like he's certainly man on a mission. And along with him for company, Yako from Uganda, Thomas Ayako. A couple of sharp corners there just to negotiate early on. You always like to see how they negotiate those. Don't they get around <laughs> a corner or two and how they react? But yeah, it's yeah pretty, everyone's it's, got out of there in one piece. I think it probably gets harder, those corners, as the t more tired you get in uh, the race. Yeah. Uh, you know, especially when you start cramping up a little bit and the legs are starting to feel it. Going around a sharp corner like that, you can cause some real problems. And it often just tests how you're travelling, you know, your concentration and you've got to be on your game. So there's a nice indicator there, just letting them know that there's a, a curb or a, a grate coming up. So good camaraderie in the marathon running. You know, they all wouldn't know each other, um, but they catch up regularly. So it's a good way of um, you know, getting to help each other out. You know, if you do a favour, someone else will return that favour later. In the shadows you can see from the CBD buildings, but otherwise conditions are marvellous for marathon running. Little breeze around, but blue sky abounding in Sydney this morning. And our women, again, just packed up there. Got a great pack. Is there, there's four or five of them, six there in that pack that are they're just eyeing each other off. It seems like they've got into a nice little group there. Yeah, I don't think they really want... This is the curve again, just come around that to corner there. They, uh, I don't think they probably want to do too much, really, to disrupt this for some time yet. I think they're quite happy to just uh, tag along, maybe for the first half of the race or so, just to see that uh, they can get through as comfortable as possible. Mm. Terrific numbers. 37,000 people. Record numbers for the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. Incredible, really. Massive, uh, massive numbers. Having it there and uh, getting to run over the Sydney Harbour Bridge and finish down at the Opera House. It's pretty, pretty attractive. Got to do a bit of running in between, but uh, start and finish is pretty good. So our lead group again. And we will be keeping an, uh, an eye on 
Ken Boy, because he's certainly wanting to put his stamp on this mm. race, Monas. He is, yeah. I'm surprised he's so aggressive, to be honest, but it's, it's he's certainly wanting to just keep it rolling, I think. As you can see, some of our other elite international runners as well. Bondi, of course, is one of the world's most famous beaches and with good reason. Golden sands, deep blue ocean and perfect waves for surfing and swimming. That is Bondi Beach. You're watching the Blackmore's Sydney Running Festival. This is our lead group, of course. They've made their way across the beautiful Sydney Harbour Bridge. And can you believe it? 200,000 cars travel this sort of area each day here in Sydney. Today, it is the domain of our elite athletes. Oh, you just saw Bondi Beach there. I mean, there's some great uh, city marathons, aren't there? London, Paris, New York. But Sydney, I mean, you can finish the Sydney Marathon and within, like, minutes be on one of the greatest beaches in the world. I mean, you know, you just don't get any better than that, do you, to recover? Let's face it. It's uh, not bad, is it? You can get in there and uh, rehydrate, of course, in some of the wonderful establishments uh, that oh, are in and around Sydney. And if you want to, you can jump into the salt water uh, around uh, some of the beautiful uh, suburban beaches, but they're so close and so accessible. I don't think they'll be thinking about that at the moment, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> something that awaits them after the event. And, you know, that's what you work for. But um, right now, and people often ask me, Steve, I'm not sure if they ask you, but, you know, what are you thinking about in a marathon? You've got a lot to, to process, to be honest, and it's up the front if you're a recreational runner. There's a lot happening, you know, getting your drinks, as we're seeing now. You know, it's essential that you get in and out of the drink stations, you position yourself well. And I used to always think it was how people react out of the drink stations is a really good indicator. Not so much early on because you can surge up and down, but in the latter part of the races, that's when it gets important, how people can respond when there's a little issue or something happening but um, I think that's a good point yeah, good. especially the hydration I mean I think that's where the Japanese excel they've got all they've got not just come as, as athletes they've got a whole team here supporting them making sure they get the right drinks at the right time whereas some of the Africans have come across on their own and they've got to grab whatever's possible for, uh, at those hydration stations whether that's water or, or some form of electrolyte they're, they're not given it so it is a little bit tougher for them I think sometimes not having that support and it can be and I think it shows sometimes they do get it really wrong and you know they're either on their game or they're not Whereas the Japanese meticulous planning, so they they're definitely ready for a race. Austra Australians renowned throughout the world for their wheelchair racing, and of course at the Blackmore's Sydney Running Festival, it's also an opportunity for our elite wheelchair entrants too. And we know that we've got the likes of Kurt Fernley. There's a couple of others in there as well. Richard Coleman is racing. Christy Dawes, we know, has uh, won this event. Kurt's had a mortgage on it, but. Uh, getting ready to uh, roll out and look at that great champion absolute legend Kurt Fernley fantastic fella and he's got a great record here he doesn't lose here too often you'd be a you'd be a game person if you're saying someone's going to beat him well I think he's won 11 times here so yeah his credentials are superb this is almost he calls this like his local event he loves coming back here and we look forward to seeing him out on the road today Eliza Alt Connell as well. So we'll keep an eye on our wheelchair athletes as we make our way through the beautiful area of Hyde Park. And of course, the oldest parkland in Australia, located right in the heart of Sydney's CBD, the Anzac Memorial, Pool of Reflection, and the iconic Archibald Fountain. Numerous monuments and statues throughout Hyde Park. St Mary's Cathedral there, is, and it's a it's a beautiful course to run. I've run this a couple of times myself, um, and it is just a beautiful city to run through. Parks, buildings, water. It is it not, you know, you, you do. I think it makes it better to run if if it is a scenic rather than just running out a, a freeway for 21k and turn around and coming back. I think some of the sights and scenes that we get, fountains, you know. You, You've got it all here in Sydney. It's one of the attractions to this event. I yeah, think. I think you're right. I think for but for the elite athletes, obviously, it's 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 something. But I think more so for the for the sort of the fun marathon runners or the runners that just want to do it to enjoy the scenery and things like that. I mean, that's fantastic to run down a straight highway 
and back again. You'll get a fast time, but you're not going to enjoy it that much, I don't think. No, and there is a lot of people in the world now. It's almost like marathon tourism. So they would be picking a city and, you know, you'd, you'd think it's Sydney. It's a pretty attractive one. You're looking through the world atlas and you go, well, do they do that anymore or something on, on technology? Yeah, but yeah. you reckon Sydney would be high on your list and why wouldn't you want to come here? Beautiful weather, great uh, support out on the course and a uh, pretty attractive place to run. Getting back to the women again, not much happening there at all. They're just uh, in that group of, as I say, about six or seven. You can see the purpose-built bridge there, just making sure Sydney traffic continues to flow. And for the runners, just a little momentary uh, up and over. And uh, they are away again. This is our men's lead group you're watching at the moment. 20 minutes down in the marathon. Iyako just uh, just edging ahead of Ken Boy for once, really. Um, you know, he's a pretty decent runner himself. 2.12 in uh, Cape Town recently. So he's in the sort of form that uh, you'd expect him to be up here at the moment. But someone like Ken Boy who can drop another four minutes or so is is just lingering just behind him at the moment. And Jeffrey Eggleston, you see, just off the back of that group, uh, he ran a, a marathon up the Gold Coast July this year. That suggests you know, he's a good quality athlete. He's just struggling to get back onto that group. So maybe they are rolling along a bit quicker. It's down to a little, a smaller group at an early stage already. Of course, access to elite athletes is a big part too of Sunday morning here in Sydney. Let's check in once again with Eloise Well. I'm down here with Kurt Burnley, our Paralympic legend. Kurt, this is your 12th time competing in this event. How do you feel today? What keeps bringing you back? Yeah, I love this marathon. This is my home marathon. I get to hang out with, uh, I get to hang out with my community, to, uh, do the thing that I love. And it's not only my, 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 my home, it's also my first one too. So. And who's your competition today? We've got Jakey Lappin, Richard Coleman, got some great girls as well in Eliza Stankovic and Christy Dawes. Well, good luck, we'll see you at the finish. Wonderful, wonderful ambassadors, wonderful athletes, and not just uh, on the national stage, but on the world stage as well. And uh, Jake Lappin, of course, a part of it. As he said, Richard Coleman and uh, Kurt Fernley, we know, absolutely elite category athlete. Just seeing a bit of wind there on the singlet. You can see blowing the, mm. the singlet, Ken Boy's singlet, across his um, chest a little bit. So I think a little bit gusty in places on this course. It can just... just uh, pull you up a little bit in different spots and that the buildings you know you probably get in and out of the building and get a bit of bruise through yeah they went through the 5k in 1624 steve so they're, they're moping along a fair old pace and i just saw honda there, the diminutive little japanese runner there he is with the glasses on his almost taking shelter really from the from the rest of the group from that wind as they come into the city but i don't think it's going to play too much of a factor unless it's a headwind in which case that might be a, a good reason to just tuck in nicely and just get avoid all of that problems as they go into some parts of the city. And the course record here is just in the, in two, in the two 11s, mid two 11s. I don't think they're going to run that today. I, I sense that, I mean, the pace they're running now is more out in the 2.14s, 2.15s. They will get going once it breaks up a bit, but I, I think they're uh, a little bit windy and a bit slower today. You're watching our men's leaders, 23 minutes underway already as part of the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival. Inside and outside cones, but anyway, it doesn't matter a couple of metres here and there. But, um, and, you know, I think we talk about the blue line and, and the Sydney Marathon coming off the, the Olympics way back in, in 2000 and a blue line that's the shortest way around the course, but it um, doesn't really make too much difference. Well, I'm just looking back there at uh, Jeffrey Eggleston, a bit of a home homegrown runner here just tailing off a little bit at the back there but he's hanging in he's, he was about 10 meters or so adrift but he's coming back now well, that's good because it's pretty tough running a, you know your own race at the, at the back of a small group but if you can tuck in now which he's making his way up into this it's going to do him a lot of good but he does seem to be wobbling all over the place his style's not exactly economic is it no he, he always look he looks like he's overworking doesn't he to me he's worked very hard he does tend to run a bit like that so it is a bit deceptive but 
I still think he's had to work hard to get onto this group and never a good sign when you, you, you feel like you're overworking just to get onto that main pack. Nice bit of sharing there from Kenboy to Ayeko. Give him a bit of a water, a bit of a drink just to keep themselves going. Yeah, you can see, yeah, he's back now, Ega, so that's good. He's clawed yeah. his way back just behind Kato there. One of the other Japanese athletes, group of about four, yeah, three or four Japanese athletes in this group now, just uh, moving along very comfortably at the back, just taking their time. Yeah. As I say, Honda and uh, I think... We've got Makino there as well, the Japanese. They're, they're running together a little bit. They, they, each, they all know each other, so that helps if you've got a bit of familiarity as well along the way. That's the lead group just ahead there. You can see the camera crew on the motorbikes just ahead. And this is the chasing group of two. I think these are the two Japanese athletes also trying to catch up. They're running their own race. It's a long way yet. So maybe we've seen in the past some of these athletes that are tailed off at the beginning of the race do come right through at the end when everybody else is literally dying on their feet. Yeah, and it can be if the course is a bit challenging, then you know you, you find that the back end it can be a completely different race. So don't get uh, don't get too carried away yet. You, you would normally expect the winner to come from this lead pack, though, to be honest. So you know I'd be a little bit surprised if it doesn't happen, but. At the moment, you know, the, these guys seem to be running along pretty comfortably. Doing it fairly easily at the moment. They'll all just be rolling through and just getting comfortable with each other. We started with 10 and we're now to 7 for our lead pack at the moment. Of course, there are so many opportunities to explore the Sydney coastline, both on and off the water. There's boat cruises, fishing, whale watching, jet boating, kayaking, and of course, having a lovely little date along the Sydney Harbour area. It is absolutely superb. You're watching the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. This is our elite men, our lead group of seven at the moment. We have a Kenyan, Ugandan, Ethiopian, three Japanese and an American in there. So uh, certainly shows the international flavor of this event. 66 countries represented across nearly uh, 38,000 entrants for the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. So wonderful global event. Uh, and as we know, also gold label status amongst the athletics fraternity as well. And you don't just, they don't give those away. There are certain criteria that you need to achieve. So. It's a cre credit to the organisers to have that gold label stage. And you have to, you know, maintain it as well. So it shows that this would be in the, in the top um, 25 or 30 marathons in the world. Yes, Destination New South Wales must be very proud of the fact that they've got that gold uh, award from the IAAF. And as you say, it's not given away easily. There's the Sorry, going back there, just a quick shot of Eggleston there. Again, he's drifting off a little bit of that pack, but... Uh, uh, he looks uncomfortable, but as you said, Steve, he seems to be still hanging in, which is good. Oh. Good to have a bit of homegrown talent in that uh, group of about seven or so athletes. What do we say, though? Last one on, first one off. <laughs> I think is, the, is, that, is, is that an old marathon yes. uh, adage, is it? Yep, so just keep an eye on that. As we get into some of the sporting precinct area, and you can see wonderful uh, ovals there. The SCG, of course, prominent around the world, not only as a uh, football venue, and uh, that can be uh, rugby league, uh, Australian rules football, and of course, a cricket venue as well. The uh, Blackmore Sydney Running Festival, of course, includes the half marathon as well. 9,200 competitors in the half marathon, and you can see... From the start point, of course, heading across the Sydney Harbour Bridge, 53,000 tonnes of steel going into the Sydney Harbour Bridge and then working their way back through Piermont and around. And they will also finish in the forecourt here at the Sydney Opera House. Wonderful finish and you can see working their way round through Circular Quay. So the half marathon and this was a little earlier getting underway the Blackmores half marathon and this is a great entry point because I know so many people they want to build up to a marathon but maybe Monos this is the way to do it you can see Eloise Welling with the gun and they are underway yeah I love the half you can really race the half you know the marathon you probably have to just space it or pace yourself a little bit but in the half and it, it is a good stepping stone or maybe if you've had a marathon or two you come back drop back to the half and run a bit faster but very popular event 
across the world. We did see the uh, social media there. And Sydney Running Festival is the hashtag that you need. Yeah, about 9,000 athletes taking part in this half marathon. I love the half marathon. Same as Steve. It's a perfect distance. Not too far, not too short. And I think... I think you can you can see the smiles on their faces. I think they're a bit more relaxed. The marathon, you know, it's going to be a, a pretty hard day at the office. But the half, you can, you know, and half it's a normal person's marathon. You don't have to put your life on hold. But it's still a great event to be a part of. Well, look at this. Here Coming we go. to the line, it's a sprint. Ben St. Lawrence to the Australia, just edging ahead there of Sato of Japan. After a half a marathon, not more than the five metres distance between the two of them. Look at that time. 65, just 65, 18, 19. That's really fast running by Benny. And that looks like that's Belinda Martin, I think, coming in, winning the women's event. Yep. Well, she's looking very strong, powering her way to the line. Another good performance, 75, I think. Terrific result. Let's find out our winner's thoughts. I'm down here with Ben St. Lawrence. Winner of the men's half marathon. Ben, you only decided to do this race two days ago. How did it feel? Yeah, well, uh, that's not quite accurate. I, I was going to race this a uh, couple of months ago, but then uh, raced a 30k trail race two weeks ago and it really took it out of my legs. So then I thought, yeah, maybe I won't race. But two days ago, the legs came back to life and I thought, yeah, I'll see if I can get a late entry. And I'm uh, really glad I did. It was a great morning out. What were the conditions like for you? Beautiful uh, temperature, nice and cool. Um, a few spots of wind around there, which made it quite challenging. It got a bit tactical there for a few Ks with uh, the lead three. There was myself, Matt Hudson and Tatsuya Sato from Japan. And uh, Tatsuya was being very uh, smart and letting us do the leading into the wind. So a couple of times we tried to slow down and encourage him to go to the front. And it, it, it made it a really exciting race. And there were a few, few surges over the last couple of Ks. And I managed to just hang on to him and, and get to the lead in the, in the last hundred. So Well done. Enjoy celebrating the win. Thanks, Elsie. So, great effort, Ben St. Lawrence, uh, the Australian 10,000 metre record holder as well. And uh, as picked by Steve Moneghetti, let's find out our women's winner. Down here at the finish line with Belinda Martin, winner of the women's half marathon. Belinda is a, an, an old training partner of mine, long-time training partner. How did you feel out there today, Belle? I actually felt good today. Um, 21K is a long way for me, but especially in this wind, I felt like every turner, or corner that I turned, there was wind. Where did you know, when did you know you had the win? Um, the first turn I saw a little girl coming up behind me and I thought, oh, we'll see. And then the next turn I thought, yeah, we've, we've got her. So yeah. well done today and good luck for the future. Thanks, Eloise. Belinda Martin, can you believe 44 years of age? What a marvellous effort and certainly still at the top of her game. And pretty good running today. Yeah. So they've, they've run, Benny and uh, Belle have definitely run fast. So it shows the conditions whilst it's a little bit breezy in spots, they've still ran pretty fast. So that's a good sign. Had to laugh when uh, Ben said, oh, I tried to encourage Sato yeah. to take the lead into the wind. I, yeah. I bet he didn't take the option too much, did he? No. I think that was very diplomatic of <laughs> Benny to be saying that. And I think, he, I think uh, yeah, some fast running, though, and I'm, that, that, that encourages me to think that uh, maybe we can get some fast times today. Back live now, and it looks like a few of our runners from the African nations have just turned the heat up a little bit, and uh, some of our lead group, which started as 10, went down to 7, and it looks like we might have three or four that are really moving to the fore now. And it seems as if the women are doing the same thing. Kip Rono now just taking the lead and pushing it on a little bit, although that group of, again, about four or five of the women are still tucked quite nicely together. But the pace is starting to pick up a little bit. A little bit of a, a surge, I think, coming here from Kip Rono. It's interesting. Both events just seem, I think, Ian, you picked it. They just seem to have been just been stretched a little bit, which is surprises me that they're, you know, they're um, they have got going so early in the race. They're almost they're single file. They're definitely this is pedal to the metal stuff. Just heading into or approaching Centennial Park. So I am surprised that they look like... Maybe that, that they looked at the pace and was a bit slow and they've decided to just kick it up a bit, I reckon. Centennial Park, of course, a fantastic open parkland. 15,000 trees, beautiful flower beds, manicured lawns, duck pond statues and cafes. Centennial Park in Sydney. There it is. If it's on in Sydney, it's on sydney.com. And there's plenty on in Sydney. 
Well, Jedi. there's plenty going on at the front at the moment because these three look like they're just breaking away now from uh, Honda of Japan, just in no man's land behind them now between this lead group of three and the other four chasing. And the time now, it's, uh, it's pretty quick. They've gone through the 10K in around about uh, 33 minutes. So the pace, Steve, pretty good. Mm, still, um, it, yeah, it's still in that 216, 217 mark. So I reckon that's are they, why. Are they being cautious or are they, mm, is the conditions, you know, the wind affecting them? Probably a little bit. And I, I'm really surprised that we've got our three Africans away, you know, an Ethiopian, Ugandan and a, a Kenyan breaking away so early in the race. Well, Honda there, he knows what he's doing. He's running his own rhythm. He's checking every... 5k split making sure that he's on the sort of pace that he can handle so he's letting them go at the moment and uh, we'll wait to see as as uh, steve said whether this is going to pay dividends later in the race yeah i think he's realized you know this is these are the these are the people who are going to win the event so if you want to win the event you need to probably get on the back of there and it's so early yet though that if he goes too hard and gets onto this group and he's overstretched then he's going to have a tired back end of the race so for him, it's a decision. Does he just keep in his own pace? And you now he's a quality, he's a 212 marathon runner. So this is not out of his speed uh, issue, but he's just got to make a decision whether he runs his own race or gets on this lead group. Out of this lead group of three, Burano just uh, on the blue vest on the inside. He looks to be the one that's struggling a little bit again, doesn't he? He's, his rhythm doesn't seem to be as relaxed as the lead two here. You can't really see him at the moment. There he is on the inside. His head seems to be sort of bobbing up and down a bit too much and slight sort of tiredness in his stride even so. And he, uh, he, recent form hasn't been, his form line's not been great recently. He has got, you know, he has got a 2.9 marathon PB, but it was a couple of years ago, so. There you see him, see he's chopping his stride, he's, he's looking down, he's, he's not comfortable. And I think he may be the next one to go if these two keep this sort of pace going. Of course, at the end of this event, the marathon runners will finish in the beautiful forecourt. It was opened in 1973, the magnificent Sydney Opera House. Set against the backdrop of Sydney Harbour, Sydney Opera House is one of the world's most distinctive buildings, attracting millions of visitors from all over the world each year, making it the perfect finish line for the Sydney Marathon. It was designed by Danish architect Jørn Utzon and opened in 1973 and is the youngest building to achieve World Heritage listing. This iconic piece of architecture is a multi-venue performing arts centre, hosting over 1,500 performances each year, including opera, ballet, theatre and musicals. Wonderful vistas here in Sydney. Beautiful green parkland and so many great venues to be running past and through and it's just one of those wonderful wonderful marathons that uh, you, everywhere you turn it's just beautiful scenery and it's been designed like that you know that's what uh, the organizers have changed the course to make sure you're picking up every part of the sydney parkland that you can get to make this a very attractive course and the weather today again i think we've I've been here for the last five years it's absolutely always perfect weather conditions almost for marathon running and the, 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 the wind is a, bit, a little bit of a factor today but having said that you know the temperature's right the sun is shining as it always has been in the last four or five years now so you can't ask for more conditions better conditions than that I don't think that's right and it you know September can be can be mixed but for some reason we always get a good day here so we've been very fortunate and that will, I think the way the course twists and turns a little bit, you're never going to get that headwind for a long time anyway, so I think you'll get a bit of respite from it, which the athletes will really appreciate. Well, we just saw a few of the uh, top, sorry, the three there, just looking at each other. Ken Boy's always looked so uh, relaxed, though, hasn't he, at the front of the race? He's always looked in command, really. Yeah, and no. Obviously, he's, you know, he's such an experienced marathoner and he knows he's the fastest runner in the field. And he's probably, you know, he's favourite to win, which comes with its own pressure and expectation. But, you know, he's leading from the front. So these are, you know, these are three athletes 
just in their rhythm, trying to just tick off a few Ks. Now, they know they've dropped everyone else. So really, for these guys now, it's just about trying to get through these early stages. Still early in a marathon, got a long way to go. So they want to just make sure they're pacing yeah. themselves. Sorry, they just come through a quick uh, watering uh, point there. I just look back there, about 100 yards back there, I think the two um, Japanese athletes are still there. They're about 100 metres or so behind that group of three and suggest that they've just got into their running together and they're happy with the pace they're rolling out and they're waiting for something to unfold up front. And as you say, in a marathon, lots of things happen in the last 10 or 15 kilometres of the event. How nice is that through there? Centennial Park, one of my favourite places to run while I'm in Sydney. It's Absolutely just a beautiful spot. Absolutely beautiful. You're right. We're going back now to the women again. That group of five or six have not really done much, really. They've literally hung together in the early part of this race. And I think that's not a bad way to, to tackle this marathon. Take it easy. The men, on the other hand, have gone ballistic virtually from the word go. So uh, the women take it a little bit more casually. And this is almost a race. Normally, uh, with the women, as, you, as we know, it's a mixed event. So they normally have a lot of men around them and they sort of sit in a, in a group. They're actually... The, the women here have got their, their race goggles on. So incredible. Sydney's coastline features a series of outdoor pools, unique swimming experience surrounded by the ocean and sky. The saltwater pools, perfect to complement the surf and ideal. If you want to do laps, you've got the kids, whatever you want to do, they're dotted along Sydney's beautiful coastal area as well. Some of those outdoor pools, magnificent. This is our elite group of three runners. As we said earlier, started at 10, became seven, and now the pedal has just been pushed a little bit harder by some of the runners from the African nations, and they're working their way through Centennial Park at the moment. Of course, the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival has got a couple of chosen charities as well, including the Breast Cancer Network Australia and also Beyond Blue. But there's 83 other charities are represented at the personal level by the runners here today. And again, that, that wind just blustery on, on the singlets of the runners there. And they will get that a little bit through um, different parts of this course, but it doesn't seem to be affecting them. No, I don't think so. This group of three look fairly comfortably taking the pace along at a reasonable uh, rhythm. You're saying it's not that fast, but they you know, they really are now as a gap of, I think, of about 100 metres or 150 metres between these three and the chasing group of about two of the Japanese athletes. So there you can see they're clear at the moment. No one really in the back there chasing, but uh, they're mopping along at a fair old rhythm, I think. Right, OK, yeah, we we beg to differ, but I, I think they've certainly got in, into their rhythm now. I mean, obviously, they're, they're now sure they'd know each other, so it's, you know, the three of these guys, whether they'll share it around, I know so Yiko's certainly taking a bit more of the lead, so I think they're probably trying to share it around a little bit, realising that the three of these... They're, this is a race between these three at this point in time, so they'll try and help each other out a little bit. That's it. You can see the Nissan lead car there, and great to have Nissan's ongoing support. Proud supporters of Blackmore Sydney Running Festival, the lead vehicle for the Blackmore's Marathon. It looks splendid out in front of our three lead runners running through Centennial Parklands. 360 acres, beautiful, right on the doorstep of Sydney CBD. Well, Ken Boy again, and uh, Ayaku. These two, I think, are the ones that uh, I think look the strongest, without any question. Especially Ken Boy. He's been dominant, really. Even from the word go, there was no stopping him. He went straight to the lead and has just been pushing it on all the way. Ayaku, though, I think is, they've been after having a little bit of a chat between the two of them. I think just sort of uh, deciding who's going to take a little bit of the lead for a while, a while before the other one takes it up again. So sharing the, the tension or the uh, the mental stress of the 42k between the two of them. Whereas Barahu, Bahanu tends to be just sitting in behind. Yeah. Ethiopians often just tend to take a little bit of um, support from the well, Kenyans and Africans. They do, and sometimes it, they come off on top, but I'm not sure whether he's going to do that today. He looks the worst of the three. Two-time Olympian Eloise Welling is a big part of our commentary team today, and she's been very, very busy at the start line. I'm down here with Cameron and his son, Aidan. Cameron, tell us what you're doing with Make-A-Wish Foundation. Uh, with Make-A-Wish, uh, they've granted Aidan a wish to participate in Blackmore's Marathon, and um, we've gone to Taronga Zoo and Luna Park, and we've seen all the local sites here in Sydney. 
Amazing. And are you, are you guys from Sydney or where are you from? No, we're from Harvey Bay, Queensland, and um, this will be our third marathon together. So he really loves being out on the course and uh, getting cheered. Great. I'll see you at the finish line. Good luck. Thank you, Eloise. Cheers. That is fantastic, isn't it? And, of course, Blackmore is celebrating their 15th year of naming rights sponsorship here at this wonderful event. Long-term sponsorship. Yeah, it's terrific. And some great health connections and the people out there enjoying their own health and well-being and linking that with Blackmore is a beautiful fit. Well, this is a running festival. We're seeing the elite athletes here, but it is a running festival. And that encompasses everybody. And I think that's the wonderful thing about the festival. It, uh, it encourages everybody to take part in sport and get healthy, which is what it's all about, really. And just looking at that shot quickly, I did see that there's a group of about two or three, just about 200 metres behind there, just around the bend at the moment. So they are still in contact, Steve. Maybe, maybe I don't know, you, th you always said that these three will decide the, the, the winning one, two, three, but maybe they'll come through at the end. We're in Centennial Park. This is our lead group. We've just ticked over 45 minutes. You're watching the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival. So you can see one of our wheelchair athletes heading past the other way. Just a bit of an incline here. The pace slowing a little bit as they come up the hill. See Berhanu on the inside. He's got that ungainly style. He's, he's looking tired, but he's still hanging in. Yeah. You're off him already, aren't you, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> I've been wrong before. I've been very wrong before, and he could come back and surprise me, but as he hasn't have. been doing any work at all. He's no. just literally been hanging back there behind the two leaders at the moment. And uh, He's, as I say, he's slightly sort of swaying from side to side, that ungainly sort of arm carriage he's got, whereas the other two, Ken Boy and Ayoku, looking very comfortable up there. And I always look at, the, at their legs. I think that their definition and the way their, um, their stride is, is gives a bit of an indication. And he, he's definitely overworking compared to the Ugandan or the Kenyan. So I think you're probably right, but we'll see. Oh, Look at that, that aerial shot. Yeah. You can see the ungainly action of Baran and Dev. You definitely. can see the rotation of his torso. Yeah. He's, he's literally sort of twisting every stride. Whereas the other's so smooth, so smooth. And just like putting a head, putting a bit of a spurt on here. There's a go across to pick up a little bit of water. Difficult to grab a cup of water when you're running at that speed. It really is. So it's a technique you've got to learn. You know, you go not taking. No, he's, there, he's so. missed it. Yeah, but I think there are a significant number of those stations all over the place. So. They're taking their time. Meanwhile, the women, they went through the uh, 10K split some time ago in 36.51, so they're motoring too. And they, uh, as I say, this is this is really where the race is. They're, they're rolling along. They're going well. And, and I definitely think that, um, you know, this is going to be a really competitive race. And I do think we saw Mercy Kuberis there, the Kenyan, just in the blue, just edging ahead of the other women and in that group of, as I said, five or six. It's been together virtually from the word go. Yeah. Oh, There's a great overhead shot from the helicopter. Just look at the shadows, though. The sun really is beating down now. Yeah, it's not... The, the ambient temperature's not hot, though, Steve. So no. whilst it's sunny, I think it's still pretty good uh, temperature for running a marathon. Long shadows. And a long way still to go in the race. So early days, I suppose Steve would say. So this is our elite men, three runners from the African nations. Sydney Harbour and the Sydney Harbour Bridge, 53,000 tonnes of steel at summit of 134 metres high. You can see the flags there on the beautiful Sydney Opera House as well as the CBD. Welcome, if you're just waking up, wherever you're watching around the globe, you are watching the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. We're heading towards 50 minutes in the marathon. This is our lead group of three men. Steve Ovet and Steve Monaghetti in commentary. And thanks to uh, all of the people that are involved in bringing this broadcast to you. You can see a couple of our camera motos there as well, helicopter shots as well, wonderful presentation, and Centennial Park is where they've been running through. 
Well, can you see Mercy Cabarrus now just pushing the pace a little bit now, getting a gap of about four or five metres on the other ladies in that group of five or six. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how they respond. She's obviously putting it to them here. Clay Dawson there, who a uh, good marathon runner, Australian marathon runner, that they're running down. So shows the quality of the... Uh, the women's field here. This is this is a race, and it's um, she's certainly sticking it to them now. Well, she's so. run 2:27 already this year, early in this year. So she's in the sort of form that uh, if she's got that sort of speed in her legs today, she could really do damage at this stage of the marathon. She's decided that she wants to pick it up a little bit as we switch back to this group of three again in the men's race and not much has changed ken boy as i said before with that vest being blown in the wind because there is a bit of a, a side wind as they come through the park now Grit, his teeth gritting a little bit but i don't think he's uh, under too much stress well a little bit of um saliva just on the side of his mouth there so you know it's we think we think they look pretty relaxed and like they're traveling mm. but on the inside internally they're working pretty hard so and you can just see that the two japanese athletes still there still about 100 meters or so just behind i never believe a head shot because i reckon a straight on shot because it's often further than it looks on on that shot how disciplined do those runners though who are sitting in fourth fifth sixth position need to be to maintain their own rhythm monitors as well as obviously trying to keep the leaders within their sights it's a it's a discipline argument isn't it it is it's it's one of those games do you or don't you because you're you Want to, you don't want to overextend, but you do want to. You want to be in this pack. You want to be in this pack, lead pack, feeling good. So it is. It, but to their credit, they are running at their pace and being very strong at this point in time, and waiting to see what unfolds up the front here. Well, there's not been much talk going on between these three in the last 5k or so. Berhanu, though, he's going to perhaps prove me wrong, isn't he? He's He's wobbling all over the place, but he's actually starting to look quite good now. So. <laughs> uh, it will it will come back later in the event. So uh, uh, you know, I'm still with you. I think you want to be efficient, and you know he's the the least efficient of the three. He might be a better runner than them on the day, so he might still get over the line. But at this point in time, this is definitely the pack, and we're seeing three Africans up the front. You know, pretty relaxed and just getting the job done at this point in time. I think they've settled into a pace. We know Blackmore's a wonderful supporters. Richard Henfrey is the CEO, and he's talking about their partnership with Special Olympics Australia. So Blackmore's has been supporting the Sydney Running Festival for 15 years, and we love the event. It's a really great way of encouraging people to, to get out and, and, and run in Sydney and get moving. This year, we've got a partnership with the Special Olympics. They're an organisation that has the same values. They're focused on getting people moving, getting people active, but they bring a real element of diversity and inclusion, and we also feel passionately about diversity and inclusion in sport and in, and in life and in business. And this year, we've been really delighted to have Chris Bunton, who's a Special Olympian gold medalist gymnast, uh, leading the stretching, the dynamic stretching part of that, that exercise program. And he's, he's an inspirational guy and I think the, 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 the team who've, uh, who've engaged in that training have really enjoyed his, his input. Uh, another part of course is, is about connecting with other people and it's a, we'll, we'll have more than 35,000 people running across the Harbour Bridge and it's a great opportunity to connect with friends and family and, and do an activity together. And you could see in some of those shots there the iconic Blackmore singlet, the green and the white, over 10,000 of them being worn in the field today as well. Great partnership there with the Special Olympics. Terrific at Blackmores and you'll see them out there training. And again, you've got to train up for these events. It's not, you don't just turn up on the day. So it's a lot of training in the lead up for so many participants today. So these are our three elite runners for the men's marathon out in front. And the, the breakdown of over 37,000 runners. We've got nearly 4,500 in the marathon, nearly 10,000 in the half marathon, over 15,000 in the 10Ks, and the family run 8,500 competitors. That is great numbers on a beautiful, sunny Sunday morning in Sydney. It's a great numbers, but also a great deal of organisation to make sure everything runs smoothly. So congratulations to everybody involved, especially the volunteers around the course. You know, hundreds and hundreds of people giving up their time to make sure that this event runs smoothly. So congratulations to them. Yeah, and that's that's what you do for these events. To, it takes a team. It's not just the participants. And even just closing the roads down in such a, a, a big a, a world city like Sydney is a logistical exercise. So good on the whole city for supporting such a great event.
66 countries being represented and it also generates 12 million dollars for the New South Wales economy just across this event Is weekend. that right? Do you hear that? You see, we don't, they're the things you don't think about having an event like this that has such a great economic benefit for the, the city, the state and the country. We did talk about uh, the bridge run, over 15,000 competitors doing the bridge run as well. There's something for everyone here. Let's have a look at what is ahead for our bridge runners. And once again, over the coat hanger, the Sydney Harbour Bridge. It is so well known. And they also head down, of course, and race all the way through, through Mrs Macquarie's chair and then back to finish. And uh, we can see getting underway, the bridge runners. Wonderful, wonderful scenes and everyone will be having the stopwatches ready to go. You can see the watches being timed. And just the last couple of years, this has actually gone to 10K, so it's officially a 10K distance now. So. They'll be measuring that on their watch and comparing other 10 kilometer times and runs that they've done. I think that's a good idea making it 10k. It's the sort of distance everybody likes to run. And as you say, if you're running other 10ks in other places, you can compare your times. It's good yeah. to see it get a get a personal best at a set distance like that. Yeah, and you want to set that. The other thing that people like is the consistency of a distance. So if they're coming back year on year, then they can compare their times and. Yeah, that's always a nice personal achievement to look at, hopefully, if you're improving. Not that I can see her there, but the bride, Mrs Cohen, has headed off on the 10Ks, yeah, along with somewhere. a number of friends. I don't think she'll be doing this sort of pace, though. This is our elite women out in front. And definitely breaking up here now, so I think... Um, Mercy Cabarrus has definitely said, well, OK, we're on, and Jeb too, so they've decided to just inject a little bit of pace here and break this race up a little bit. Yeah, Yunus Jeptu latched very quickly onto Kibara, so she sensed there was a surge in pace and she didn't want her to go too far away. So she literally is in her shadow. She's actually quicker than uh, Kibara. Oh, about the same time, almost exactly the same time, I think. So they're, those two, they will, they would know each other. They, they almost, I think they're, they're, they're probably um, training partners, so I think they've decided to just run together and break this field up. I wonder what you do, though, if you're a training partner when you get to the competitive side of things. Oh, you? I think you know. So every, <laughs> every person for themselves when you, when you get down the last couple of Ks. And that's the one thing in a marathon. Often, it's, we don't see a sprint finish too often. You can, you do occasionally, but you're racing against the, the marathon distance, so often it's there's great camaraderie, well, we, and to we, be honest, you, saw you're happy to get to the finish. Well, we, we saw almost a sprint finish with Ben St. Lawrence and Sato in the, in in the, the half, half, so that you never know in a marathon. I've seen some marathon races where it does come down to a sprint. Yeah, you don't want it to, though. Do you? It's not all that. You want to enjoy running into a, to the finish line if you can, but that's the nature of marathon running now. It's so competitive. We know many areas in Australia are suffering drought at the moment and our thoughts obviously to those uh, farmers and rural communities but you can see the beautiful green parkland of uh, Sydney has uh, Centennial Park and you can see the verdant cover there. Our Nissan lead car and this is our lead runners. It is a group of three and you're watching on a Sunday morning the Blackmores Sydney Running Festival. Plenty of water there, but none to be drunk so far. Our lead group of three runners, Ken Boy, just looking over the shoulder a little bit there, Monas. Yeah, I think he's just checking where our eco is and how far, whether that lead, uh, whether that chase group is closing him down. But I, I think these three are into their running and they're chatting, helping each other out, sharing it around a bit. So yeah, they're aware that the race is in their hands and their control in their legs to be honest but uh, this is where the race is up front for sure yeah there's a little bit of a tension going I think Ken Boy not so relaxed as he's been in the past he keeps looking over his shoulder and I don't know whether he wants a little bit of help in just taking the strain of leading it all the way through or he's just checking where his other I suppose compatriot or what you could say maybe teammate Ayoko just at the back there who was really helping him out, but seems to be suffering a little bit. There he is at the back there. 
not really uh, helping as much as he did before in the early part of the race. No, no I think I'm sensing that Kenboy wants to keep this pace rolling, but he doesn't want to do it from the front by himself. So he's looking for a bit of help, and as you should, you know, it's early days still in the marathon, not even into an hour yet. So long way to go up the front of this event. And Bahar normally they, Ethiopians don't tend to help out a lot, so he won't want to, whilst he'd be... Ken Boy be hoping he takes a bit of the front running. It's, I don't think that's going well, to happen. It's, 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 the, it's the classic battle between Kenya and Ethiopia, isn't it? As we see time and time again on the track and on, on road races, where the Kenyans do all the pacemaking, all the hard work, and the Ethiopians just hang back, as they always do, relying on their speed over the last part of the race. Yeah, and they're faster, so they can. That's the tactics. If you're going to know you, go, you can back yourself in for the sprint, then don't do, don't do any work if you don't have to. See the other, I'm going to say, weekend warriors, the uh, public runners, and they would be seeing these three and knowing that they've still got all that Centennial Park work to do before they uh, turn around and head back towards Sydney to be able to finish here at the Sydney Opera House. I love that interaction, though, and It's terrific that uh, in this, that's one thing about marathon running. We're all out there doing it together. So you really can um, share that experience with the elites, recreational runners, and support out on the course. A couple of paces there we see with those flags. It's great. So a couple of fancy dresses as well. And you can see here's all our runners making up the 37,000 people that are on the streets of Sydney this morning. Opened in 1932, the Sydney Harbour Bridge, world renowned, a symbol of Australia. Of course, you can do the bridge climb. You can do the bridge climb, the bridge climb express, or the bridge climb sampler, and it allows you to reach the summit 134 metres above sea level, and that is some sort of panorama of the city and suburbs as well. We've just ticked over an hour in uh, the marathon. This is our lead group of three men, and Steve Monaghetti, Steve Ovet have just been analysing it, having a bit of a look and just seeing who's likely to be making the pace and who's likely to be sitting off. And Ken Boy just looks, he's the perfect marathon runner, very head straight, looking down the road, arm action nice, almost got that right angle in his elbow joint. He's, he's almost the perfect marathon style and uh, he's leading this race for good reason. I'm, I'm not sure he wants to, but he's certainly taking up most of the front running. Well, he's the class act, there's no question about that. I mean, a 2-7 man. Um, he's looking over his, uh, at his teammate, just well, I say his teammate, these, uh, the runner that's been helping him a little bit, a Yayo just behind there, who, who isn't really sort of like doing much work now for him. And I think that's affecting Kemboy. I don't think he wants to, as Steve says, to take up the pace all the way because he's led it almost from the start. I don't think he wants to take it all the way. I think he would like a little bit of a break. He's not going to get it from Biranu, the Ethiopian. He's been uh, literally in the shadow of anybody that's been in the front virtually for all of this first hour of the race. Yeah, and it's interesting, though, the Ugandan, Thomas Oyoko, he's actually really good on the track. So he's got a lot of fast speed track running, but not as experienced over the marathon. So he looks like he doesn't want to do too much of the work, to be honest. Well, he's going into, as you say, uncharted territory. If he's a, he's a track runner coming into the second half of a marathon, he's probably been a bit cautious. So he's doing the right thing. They're all taking on a lot of fluids here because this is the crucial part of a marathon. You've got to hydrate. If you don't hydrate, it literally does uh, kill you in the last part of the race. Kim Boy, though, again, pushing on. As Steve said, with that perfect running style, metronomic. You're talking about the hydration. More than 76,000 cups of iso -way electrolyte will be consumed around the course. That is quite extraordinary, isn't it, when you have a look at it? Kim Boy... Kemboy turned 34 at the start of this week and this is his 18th marathon as well. We can uh, find out a little bit more. We've got a former bachelor who's a part of the lineup here today as well. And down in the start line with Maddie J. Maddie, which event are you running in today? I'm going to be doing the, the 10K today, so not going to be going all out and doing the half marathon like I was going to do originally. And how many times have you run this event? You know, this is my very first time running this event, so I'm going to bring along my brother and sister for support. 
Great. And that, that's who you're running with today? I am. I haven't decided if we're going to stay together or if I'm going to try and peel off and do a PB. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll uh, have fun out there regardless. Legend, thanks so much. <laughs> That's half the issue, isn't it? Because the plan, I think it might have been Napoleon or Winston Churchill said, uh, no plan survives first contact. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, when you're planning to run as a family and then someone, oh, maybe, maybe not, no, you go ahead. How does that discussion work, Monas? I'm sensing that he, that was that was diplomatic. <laughs> he's a bachelor. He's very competitive. He's taken yeah. off. They're running. They're, they're about yeah. five seconds across the line and he's gone. I, I was just waiting to see whether he was going to pass a rose onto Eloise yeah. actually at the end of it there but uh, we never no, got that yeah yes, that's right exactly but that's it yeah, it's a, you know everyone participating here when you've got over 37,000 runners competing today across the events runners walkers there's a variety of backgrounds but they're all out on the road together today well Yako now has, has taken up the pace. I think Ken Boy must have said something to him because he's gone to the front now. Just, just ushered him Boy. through. Yeah, yeah just, just a... ushered him through and said, come on, this, you know, just help out now. And they're going through that beautiful uh, line uh, 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 of trees here, giving him a little bit of shade. And Ken... he's a he's a 60-minute um, half marathon runner. So he is a class act. He probably hasn't translated that into the marathon. He's only ran a couple of marathons. But his track and half marathon four is actually the best in the field. But whether he can last over the marathon distance, he hasn't that's, been proven that's to That's what do I that think. Yet. I think he's been a bit cautious. I think he's been a bit sort of, I'm just going to hang back a little bit here because we're coming into territory that I'm not sure about. Ken Boy's ushered him through and said, no, come on. If you're in this race, you've got to help out a little bit. And I think he's done just that. He's moved to the front. Very, very be beautiful style A Yoko. Same as Ken Boy just behind him. And Baranu, again, has not done a single thing. We've been worried about him, but he's been hanging in. Those corners are being tough for him, though. As he, got, he went round it there, he had to slow down and pick up his pace again. He's suffering a little bit more than the front two, I think. He definitely doesn't seem as relaxed, does he? We'd have to say that, you know, that, that rougher style is um, very noticeable against... Uh, his two African friends, a Kenyan and a Ugandan, who look, here we go, you might be right. Could this be a race in two? Gee, Steve, you've preempted that. He's dropped He's dropped 10 metres in about 20 metres. Well, he was suffering a little bit, and he's looking across there to see where the next uh, athlete is behind him. It's a long way back, but he is starting to tire. One of the lovely things there we saw, the other athletes are running on the other side. One of them stopped and took a quick picture with his phone of the of the lead athletes as they went through <laughs> right. and carried on. So they're, they're enjoying it. They really are, the other side. And uh, these athletes in front, though, they've got a, a bit of work to do. Iyeo just looking good, but here you see Barano. He's suffering. And he's dropping right off very quickly indeed. And once you go, as we've said, if anyone's heard us before, and Steve, we know that once you drop, that leash is broken. It is really difficult to get back onto that group. So you're sensing that this is this is his day done. Well, what we need to know now is how far the chasing group behind uh, the third runner now are because that will be the difference between them coming through and catching him on the second half of this race. And that's where it becomes a mental game. That second pack of, of the Japanese, they'll get a bit of a, a positive reinforcement now, thinking they're starting to pick up one of the runners from that lead group. So no surprises there. Yunus Jeptu now just taking the lead a little bit away from Kibaris, who's been doing most of it. But these two again pulling away, I think, from the other women in the, in the women's elite race. And Jep two, well, personal best of 2.26 last year, so she's in good form. So these runners have got a little bit to go as they're working their way back from Centennial Park, of course, getting past the SCG, and they'll also be going through the newly developed area of Barangaroo Reserve. Look at the other athletes on the other side, though, clapping them as they go through. Fantastic, they're enjoying it, they really are. Barangaroo Reserve is a man-made public parkland which features sweeping harbour views and is one of the best spots to take in the city. Amongst the 75,000 native plants in the reserve are pedestrian and shared cycle paths and public lawn areas with views of the Harbour Bridge. Underneath the artificial hill is the Cutaway, a six-storey high event space built into the headland that can accommodate to 5,000 people. Barangaroo is a beautiful addition to the Sydney Harbour, a must-see for locals and tourists alike. Yeah, wonderfully developed area there at Barangaroo Reserve. 
And they're now down to a race in two. Kemboy, who has been out front for the majority of this, we've ticked over the hour, and these runners have turned and will set sail for that Barangaroo Reserve area. Of course, they'll go through Piermont, they'll travel through the CBD, and they'll finish in the forecourt of the Sydney Opera House. And look at that, Elijah Kemboy just going, grabbing two or three drinks mm. there, realising he wants to hydrate, but a great sign of how well he is travelling. The way he could just coordinate getting one of those cups and getting a good drink. They're going well, these two, and there's hand signal. It's almost like a bike race. Yeah, they're, they're, they're deciding what's going on. They're, they're, they now know that they've comfortably got it between the two of them. Unless something dramatic happens over the last part of the race, these two look quite comfortable. They've been talking to each other all through. They've been sort of saying, you know, come on, take a bit of pace, drop back a bit. They've been orchestrating the whole thing. Now it's a battle between who wants to win it and who doesn't, really, I think. Those runners on the left-hand side, they're still making their way to the Sydney Cricket Ground and Nalian Stadium as well. A great sporting precinct, uh, Australian Rules Football, Rugby Union, League, Soccer, Baseball, Cycling, you name it. Certainly major concerts as well in that precinct. Uh, Yako leading and, I mean, literally just behind him, Steve. Kemboy is just almost using him as a shield. It might be a bit of wind on this part of the course. I don't yeah. know whether that's the case, but he seems to be just not running side by side. He's using him as a shield, really. And that's I think that's a good tactic. And if they're going to help each other, it's down to two now. So I would think that that's the way to do it. And then Kemboy will come around shortly and, and Ayoko will jump in behind. And I reckon that's good tactics. And that shows to me that they are, they're aware that, you know, they need to help each other out. And as we know, the last couple of K that won't be, but at this stage, it's going to help them both get better runs. The breakdown of the winners over the wonderful history of this event, Kenya has won the men's event nine times, Japan four times, Tanzania two wins, Ethiopia with one win, and New Zealand also with one win as well. But the Ethiopian women have certainly dominated six wins there. Australia's had five wins, Japan four, Kenya one, and New Zealand one in the women's Blackmore's Sydney Marathon. So uh, if uh, Ayuku can uh, can get it done, Ayoko, um, it would be uh, another win for Ethiopia. Bit of a chat going on there, Ayoko talking to his uh, friend, I suppose, Ken Boy. Uganda and Kenya, that border obviously sometimes gets blurred between the tribes. So, yes, they're, they're probably, you know, close friends and they're probably close training partners too. Having a bit of a chat, deciding what's going on here. They're probably thinking, well, we've got this race in the bag at the moment. Um, what are we going to do? Are we going to race all the way to the line or is it going to be a tactical decision? Who takes it in the end? Burhan, who over the back there, he actually hasn't completely dropped off. So he's He's hanging in there. It'll be interesting to see when he gets caught by the next pack, which will happen, I'm pretty sure, whether he can actually respond and, and just get on the back and have a... Sometimes you do have ups and downs in a marathon, so you can have your bad patches and come out of that, but I think this is a bit more than that at the moment. For Kimboy, who is the senior pairing of that, it's his 18th marathon, and uh, we now see our elite women, but does it get any easier the more you do, Modders? No, it gets, <laughs> it gets harder, I can tell you. No doubt about that, Ian, because you understand that things can happen in the race and you get a bit you get a bit fearful, to be honest. The more I ran, the more worried I got about what was going to go wrong rather than the sort of the enjoyment of just enjoying a marathon. So is there a blissful ignorance for a lot of the first-time runners, even second-time runners, uh, not sure of what's ahead? Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. The best marathon of your life is your first one. I can tell you that. Oh, ain't that the truth? And as I tell people... You only ever finish your first marathon once, so enjoy that first one. And it might be downhill from there, but no, it's either there. obviously there's lots of challenges, but I think there is some ignorance going into your first one. And then you get to a, an educated phase after sort of seven or eight, and then when you're getting up into your high teens, you start to go, oh, gee, what am I doing? This is, do I really want to do this for another four or five years? Well, yeah, but there's some of these athletes we've seen in some of the they run 300 marathons or so, Steve. Is that right? So what do you do in the 300th one? Do you think, oh, this is just you know, another day at the office? Well, hopefully there's no surprises by your 300th <laughs> marathon, surely. Uh, yeah, isn't that incredible that people could uh, do that many that many marathons? Unbelievable almost. It shows, you know, how, how it's become such a, a thing to do now, a, a rite of passage for lots of people. Well, these two are certainly dressed for serious business, but I think Eloise Wellings might have a couple that are doing it for fun.
the starting line with Brian from the Guinness World Records. Brian, what are these runners trying to achieve today? Uh, these guys are all following some strict guidelines today, uh, doing the fastest marathon dressed in certain costumes. What are you trying to do? Uh, Eamon from Ireland, dressed as a surfer. How about you? Andy from Sydney, fastest marathon as a monk. Connor from Wollongong, fastest marathon as a construction worker. Josh from Sydney, fastest marathon as a French maid. Dan Shah from Malaysia, uh, fastest marathon with a national flag. Great, well done. And Brian, tell me what these guys have to do to qualify. Uh, so these costume records are actually passed around the world at the marathons uh, in all the major cities, and they have to pre-approve their costumes with us. They all have different records that they have to beat. Uh, for example, the monk has to run in three hours and three minutes, uh, and they all have different times uh, to beat based on the costume. Wow, well, good luck today, guys. You look great as a French maid. See you at the finish. <laughs> Hysterical. <laughs> now, does the, does the surfer have to carry the surfboard and run in the thongs? Yeah, or of course. Is he allowed well, that, to they're official don kit, something with official, laces? Official kit passed around the world. Well, I hope they wash them between <laughs> one uh, one marathon and the next. But, yeah, I think carrying the surfboard, running in flip-flops, that's got to be the hard one. It's oh, got yeah, to be sure. Gee, well, it's hard enough running a marathon. I don't think you need to put any extra layers over top. And it is officially sanctioned. I mean, they're, they're doing it, but they are trying to achieve times that are officially sanctioned by the Guinness Book of Records. I have to say that when you go to your, your dinner party and you say you're the fastest French maid <laughs> in, a, in a marathon, I don't think that's going to get much kudos, is it really? I don't know. Maybe it will. Uh, maybe. I reckon the monk's got the right idea because you almost need to be a monk to, in the few months leading yeah. in when you're training, don't Very you? Very interesting, Very Steve. disciplined. Very and, good, yes, yes. yes. Thank you, Obi-Wan. Yes. Right. <laughs> Well, Kibaris, let's get back to the serious stuff. Kibaris now is starting to push hard, and uh, that's good. You can see Jep2, though, just slightly suffering a little bit just behind here now. There's a gap, two metres or so. They're coming into a water station, I think, sometime soon. So these two broke right away from the other women in the women's elite. Yeah, and she looks like, Eunice looks like she's just working a bit harder. They've got, got that sort of forward lean. A little bit unusual running action, but they've kicked away, and... And uh, no surprises there, but two and two, it's funny. Men and women, we're both down to two and two in the lead packs at the moment. And Ken Boy now doing his little bit at the front, uh, just taking the pace. Heading back through Hyde Park now, so back to the CBD around the, the famous fountain in, in Hyde Park here in Sydney, Australia. That's the Archibald Fountain, certainly iconic. 580 different varieties of exotic native trees in Hyde Park in Sydney. That's a great shot really, isn't it? I mean, we see so much beautiful scenery in this marathon. We sometimes forget as they run through some of these beautiful, iconic parts of Sydney. What a wonderful race this is. Ayo just taking his time there, just looking at his watch, checking it again. He looks fairly comfortable. Oh, just uh, the other side of the of the sign there, and then he missed it really. But um, yeah, I think he, as you said before, he's the class track runner and he's looking quite comfortable at the moment there's still a long way to go but he, he seems to be gauging himself pretty well Steve. Marathon runner always wins out Steve. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of climatic conditions because they'll be running through the CBD area and obviously around Darling Harbour and things like that but are the trees present a slightly cooler environment is there just a little bit of respite when you're in the shade? Yeah and tall buildings interestingly Ian as well provide some shadow I think the thing you'll see here is it's it's gusting because you'll be in, in some, a precinct that has some tall buildings and, and some protection and then you'll turn a corner and you'll get a gust of wind and that's when we're seeing that side. Sometimes it's a side wind that's worse than a headwind. At least a headwind you can just lean into it. Side wind will often buffet you and just break your rhythm. So I actually prefer a headwind personally. So um, Well, they, they say in cycling the side winds are the worst to deal with. Yeah. Headwinds, are, are, can, you can tolerate. The side winds, you can't judge. And I think that was the case sometimes. You just see a Yoko there just slowing down a little bit more than Ken Boy to get that fluid inside him. Being a bit more cautious, maybe a little bit more worried about the fact that he's going into an area where he needs the fluids. So he slowed right down there. Yeah, and out of a drink station, it's always a bit, a bit messy. So I don't think that's anything to be too concerned about. And 
We're trying to get some split times. We, we're just having trouble getting them at the moment. But um, I think they're still, you know, they've seen it's down to two. They've probably got rolling a little bit. But I'm thinking they're sort of 214, 215 pace. So. You see in Kenboy there, he's, his hands are slightly clenching a little bit. And he's, as I said before, he's clenched his teeth as well. He's starting to slightly tire a little bit, I think, Kenboy, from doing all the hard work at the front. We're approaching the 80-minute mark. You're watching the Blackmore's Sydney Running Festival. Lead women again a group of two. Can you call to a group? So I'm not calling them a group. <laughs> a, a pairing, <laughs> a, a pairing. duet. That's right. And uh, yes, it's interesting. I never. It's kind of a bit using that bike analogy again, Steve. You kind of want two's almost not enough because you're either leading or you're not. So you probably want a few more in that pack. But um, they're out on their own. No men around. Not much happening out there. Yeah, you can see Mercy now, Cabarrus. She, she's well, she led earlier on, and there was a bit of a change of pace, really, when Jeptu took it up. But she's gone back into the into the lead, and she's pushing on a little bit more. As we said, two two men and two women battling it out now, well ahead of everybody else in both their fields. Coming around some of these sharp corners now, tired legs are going to be uh, affected a little bit by this uh, sort of switchback turns that they sometimes have in the marathon. Ken Boy again. In his uh, key position, just leading them through. Yoko in the shadow again. Maybe a bit of wind, as Steve said. They're just uh, behind the, the taller figure, I suppose, off Ken Boy, just getting a little bit more of a, a relaxation from that side wind or headwind. Yeah, a bit twisty and turny through the um, barricades there. And I often quite like that because it just breaks up the rhythm a little bit. I, I, I like it when it's um, when it's ch chopping and changing think, a little doesn't bit. Doesn't it break up the mental side too, though? You yeah, know, you have to think bit, about yeah, it you know, rather yeah. than just sort of get into that rhythm of... Uh, so you see the Ken boy there just putting his hand out saying, come on, you know, take up the pace. It's really interesting. He actually wants some assistance. He realises that there's still a long lot of running to yeah. do in this event. So he's actually well, Maybe he's suffering help. a little bit and doesn't want to doesn't want to take the lead. He wants someone to just get in front so he can relax behind him. But he, you know, he's still there. I reckon they're both travelling along OK. Yeah, they do I seem reckon. to be sort of like just helping each other. But uh, Ken Boy just seems to be suffering a little bit. If you can read anything into that sort of stoic face he's got there really but uh, yeah, not much talking though Ayako looks very comfortable very comfortable Kemboy definitely grimacing a bit more than Ayako but you don't know whether you can really read into that much they seem like they're, um, they're, they're beside each other now which is interesting so I think they have teamed up now good, good idea of the pace there, look at that I mean that, that motoring along See the bridge in the background there. And runners still making their way through. This is our elite pair. Well, nest nestled between a tranquil inner harbour beach on one side, popular Pacific Ocean surf beach on the other side, Manly combines a laid-back attitude and sophisticated dining scene as well. All the ferry rides lead to Manly, the Corso, the Promenade, you can do it all at Manly Beach. Uh, the other areas, of course, they run through include the Rocks and Sydney's historic quarter, some of the oldest pubs in the country now evolved into a thriving modern precinct and as a part of that too the museum of contemporary art australia which is a leading museum dedicated to exhibiting interpreting and collecting contemporary art from across australia and around the world so these are some of the beautiful areas that these runners are running through at the moment and they are a pair of two sorry they are in the rocks there so they actually go this is not far from where we are at the finish line but they actually then head back out of the CBD and uh, run along the harbour in a different section and come back. So it's kind of teasing you a little bit because you can look across, they look across to their right, that's exactly where we are just across the water. But they've got a, you know, another 
15, 20k to go. Yet yeah, tantalising, but still a long way to go. Yeah, that's right. When you did that Sydney Marathon, Steve, did you have that same feeling that it's almost there, but I'm a long way away from it? Or? Well, we, we finished differently. Our obviously. course was yeah. out at Homebush, so we, you, we went over the bridge. We sort of, I felt like we were running towards. The I don't like. I, I, mentally, I don't like coming near to the finish line because it's it is a bit tempting to go oh, close. Yeah. So I, even when I'm training, I never run past my home if I've got to do a bit extra. I always turn off a bit early. Because so once duck, you get near you, home, you don't duck in then. Up. No. <laughs> yeah. Were you talking about Steve the 2000 Olympics, which was your last appearance in in green and gold for Australia, um, and and running obviously here at your home Olympics and this event is modelled on what was the blue line that you followed famously in 2000. And I'm glad that they've kept a bit of that um, tradition going and it was very emotional for me, it was my last marathon but it was my only marathon in Australia would you believe and you know, I've been running around the world for 15 years but it was the only opportunity I got to run here in Australia and uh, the home crowd was unbelievable. Fantastic and you can still see the emotion in Steve want to get his face we can see our elite men and our elite women of course but the ongoing development has meant that with the support of strategic partner destination new south wales the event has now received iaaf gold status which puts the sydney marathon alongside london new york and boston and you can see in this and lead car they're just ahead 50 meters or so of these two camboy again at the head of the uh, well as we try to call it a pack but it's not it's just the two of them really and I love seeing that lead car. If you're in the lead pack, you know if you've got the lead car ahead of you, it's got times, it often will give you split times. You don't need to worry about your time. And people used to say to me, oh, is it annoying having the lead car there? No, you want to be, it it's means a bit, you go having a good day yeah, if you're near the lead it, car. It's it almost like shepherding you, isn't it? It's, a little bit, yeah. yeah it's like, like, you know, you're doing well, you know, we're here, and you're at the head, you're yeah. at the front. Yeah, and That's all where the you attention's want to be. on you. You know that, you know, you're the you're front and centre in the coverage and in the support you're getting out on the course because you're controlling the race. Do you have to get comfortable, though, with that infrastructure around you? Because as you work through the marathon ranks and you become one of the leaders, you then have to get used to camera motorcycles and flashes going off and timing and people yelling and all that sort of thing. So you have to work into that sort of space, don't you? You do. And that's, you know, we talk about a Yoko being a really good track runner. This would be this is not what he would be used to. You know, it's a very controlled environment running around the track. Yeah. Whereas out on the road here, you can get strange things happen. You know, you, you look across. I remember I was running a race and um, one person across to my right was um, a spectator running across to cheer someone was actually hit by a car. So yeah. they, um, I'm running along and you just got to deal yeah. with that, you know. And, and you know, without without getting too um, de into the detail, it was it was a partner of one of the men in the race. So imagine you're running along, and suddenly you see your partner, you know, get struck by a vehicle on the other side of the road. And so you just got to block that out and just you know focus back on your race and hope everything's okay, and then get on with the business. So lead women working their way past the Archibald Fountain, and again we have. A grouping of two, a pair, yeah. and uh, the Kenyan runners just working together. Well, Jep too just, just did take a little bit of the pace earlier on, but she's been overtaken again by a teammate, I suppose, or a compatriot, Kibaris. They don't look great, though, the, the no, two women. They, 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 they're they, at the front and away, but they don't look terrific. Well, you don't have so. to look that great if you're winning. That's the way. I mean, you just have to win, don't you? But, I mean, yeah. having said that, Kibaris is, the, I suppose, the, the better of the two in terms of performances in the last year and this year. So she's she's perhaps just hanging back a little bit. There is no column for how in the records that we keep here. There is no <laughs> column for how. No, it's right. just a time. Yeah. And whether you're first, second, third, or maybe 300. Yeah. Well, there you go. They're still um, <clears throat> still these two just edging Black along. Moore sign there, 28K. Yeah. So, and that's... What do I say to people? Uh, this is the other little message. 28k in the marathon. It's about halfway, and you all go, "Well, no, it's not." No, because the maths halfway. doesn't work. That's right. But I tell you, it is two thirds of the way through in distance, but halfway in feeling and mental stress. 
Well, of course, this is an opportunity for everyone to compete. And as we can see on the right-hand side of the screen, we've got our everyday runners on the left-hand side. We've got our elite. But one of our ambassadors, part of the Blackmore's run squad, he wants to encourage people to get out there, have a run, no matter what your level of ability. Here's Matty J. This year, I'm very excited to be part of the Blackmore's running squad. We're pretty much just trying to get as many people outdoors, being active and healthy. I think of all the sports that you could potentially do, running is the easiest. The barrier to entry is pretty minimal. We've all got a pair of shoes and you know you don't have to go out and run a full marathon. It can be as simple as a 2K jog to still get the health benefits. I think the best part about partnering with a brand like Blackmore's is that they have such an emphasis on health and well-being and they generally want to get as many Australians outdoors and exercising. The thing I love about this event is that there really is something for everybody, whether you want to do a full marathon, a half marathon, or even just a 3.5 or 10 kilometer run. And something that is really special is the fact that it's the only race in Sydney that shuts down the Sydney Harbour Bridge. It certainly does. These gentlemen have been across it. If you'd like to be a part of it for 2019, log on to sydneyrunningfestival.com.au. Entries open for 2019, sydneyrunningfestival.com.au. And if you want to follow us socially, you can do that on Twitter, official BSRF, as in Blackmore Sydney Running Festival, official BSRF on Twitter. Now, I don't know if my maths is good or not, but if they were, I reckon, about 88 minutes through 28K, I halved that. 44 and add that on, 212. So they're actually running a little bit quicker than mm. I'm giving them credit for. So whether well, that, that's, don't, that's, don't, that's don't hold me to it. Math. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I reckon, uh, and, and you know, that's that's pretty good running. We know the, the course record is only 211 mid. So they're they're in amongst it. They've come through in the last part though, haven't they? They've obviously the first part was was okay. You were saying, oh, they're a bit cautious. They're taking their time. But obviously, once once they've broken it down to the two or three of them. They've actually motored on a bit, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, and that's, we've seen that because they've broken away. And again, in the women's, no matter what, what we're seeing and what we're calling, they're obviously going at a good pace because they're out by themselves. So you don't get out by yourself by jogging around. They're obviously, um, you know, injected some pace. And it's down to two in the men's and two in the women's, and they're both obviously going along very well. Just see the slightest angle for descent as they come down to the waterline around the harbour and you just have to make the most of that don't you monitors you just need to stretch the legs out and is it i'm not going to say it's a point of relaxation but obviously it's somewhere where you can just pop it into neutral for a little while interestingly it can be harder running downhill right. because of the eccentric contraction so your muscles are, are getting lengthened and and contracting so it, it actually is fatiguing and and your quads are normally the ones that go first in a marathon if yep. you hit the wall and they're the ones that often get the, the pounding on the downhill so you don't want too much and you, you but you do need to sort of let yourself go a bit rather yep. than holding back so it's it's there's a technique to running downhill a lot of people pay attention to running up but there's a definitely a, a strong uh, ability to run downhill and do it efficiently and with a good flow uh, Kibiris in the blue, 34 years of age, and Jet 2 in uh, the black and white colours with the pink band, 35 years of age. These two would know each other's run so well and would have competed, obviously, at national level and also on the international stage as they are doing right now. Kibaris just giving a couple of signals there. So not to come past, that's just giving a bit of an awareness that there might be a little turn or a, a dip in the course. So... She's obviously travelling really well to be able to be passing that information on. So the rocks is the area that they are heading into at the moment, of course, uh, literally cut from the sandstone cliffs that rise above Sydney Harbour and the Museum of Contemporary Art Australia, a big part of that as well. And they've got a Chuck Close exhi uh, exhibition coming up across this summer. Is that why it's Australia. called the rocks, is it, eh? I never actually thought about that. Maybe that's why it's called the rocks, because there's rocks it, everywhere. It's cut out of the rock. I would think that would be a good right. lead to it, Steve. It's okay. <laughs> it makes sense, really, doesn't it? I never actually thought about that. You can see why I am a maths teacher, not a... Not Sandstone a rocks, actually. Yeah, so, yeah. Teacher. Yeah. Take it easy, Steve. Yeah, that's right. Darling Back Harbour to, in the background. I can run, I think. Yeah, and a little bit higher up here. So no wind there, though, which is, that's um, that's good. Too. Interesting. I thought, you know, up on those flyovers, sometimes that's where you will get a bit of breeze coming through, but they look like they're um, they're travelling pretty well there. So Darling Harbour, superb setting, of course. Scenic waterfront promenades, El Fresco cafes, bars, restaurants, nightclubs. 
And you can see it's really turning on its best face today is Sydney. Oh, how so. nice is that? Imagine running along. You've got to be taking in that view if you're running along. I know it's business up the front of the event, but, gee, I reckon you're enjoying that view no matter who you are. So this is our bridge run, and our bridge run finishes just making their way across. Now 15,000 people Not in the bridge run, 10 kilometres. Yep. Kevin Batten, Celia Sullihan, our winners there in the men's and women's 10K. Sorry. So 10 kilometres, that's uh, for a lot of the people that you train with Monas and for you, Steve Avett, it's a little bit above your distance, but for Monas, for marathon runners, so 10 Ks are doing their sleep, do they? Oh, it's a good distance, a really good distance. You can go fast, very measured, and as as we all know, a track event, so you can measure your times to world records, track 10K as well. So a very, probably, uh, I think the distance that most people would, if you, I ask someone what sort of runner you are, I normally try and get their 10K. Yeah, beat. I think that's right. You say what sort of distance you run, and if they say I'm a sort of distance runner, you say what's your best 10K? Yeah, that's right. Yep. That's it. The Kibaris, again, just uh, pushing the pace on a little bit. Yep, two behind these two, much the same as the men, sharing the pace, just taking a little bit of time, maybe a K each in front. I think Kabaras is travelling pretty well. I think she is trying to get, I reckon she might want a little bit of help, but I don't think she's getting any. On, on sort of time, she's about five, maybe six or seven minutes faster on paper than Jep two just behind in recent form. That's over the last year and this year. So, yeah, she's, she's got that up her sleeve as such. But having said that, you still want some help if it's possible from your teammate yeah. or from your countrymen or yeah. women in this case. Yeah, when there's only two of you, I think you try and share it around. And if it's a bit windy, though, it might make it a bit difficult. The big pillars of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. We've travelled over 90 minutes. You are watching the Blackmore's Sydney Running Festival. through the shadows underneath the harbour bridge. Look at that wonderful structure there. 53,000 tonnes of metal going into that bridge. And this is the bridge that goes over Darling Harbour. So our oh. elite men, our two race leaders. Oh, it looks as if Yoko is just dropping off a little mm. bit lot more than he, he has been. I mean, there's a five metre gap here going across they've, they've never been more than a pace apart so it looks as if there's a little bit of a move here well, we have to wait and see it's still early days but uh, maybe at this point you sense really that there's uh, the marathon runner against the track runner coming yeah. into it and you definitely that's that's a, a, a gap that you wouldn't expect they've been running together for the whole journey so and there's no hill there's no reason why you would drop off there except that you're getting tired you're stuffed but anyway, that's um, that's what we see unfolding. Whether that track speed can be hangs in, you know, you get to sort of four or five k to go, then you, mentally he knows that, oh, gee, this is where my event comes into into my own. But this is maybe why Ken Boy's stretching him here. Yeah, you get the get feeling. Away. Yeah, you get the feeling that he's asserting himself here. I mean, there's prize money at stake, so yes, the, you know, it's a big deal. And Yoko just behind. Still looking good, still looking comfortable. He's, he's not tiring, but you sense that the gap is slightly opening up here. You can see the cadence of Kenboy slightly faster than it has been in the last 10K or so. Oh, I think he's trying to close. I think you'll find that he, he, he'll give a, at least one go to close and just to make sure that uh, he doesn't quite give up on winning just yet. And, you know, if they are running fast, if they run under that 2.11... 18 course record from a couple of years from 2014 then you know there's a bonus as well so you know this is serious running so you're going to get back on steve yeah, you're not convinced it's a it's a question whether he's going to do it he's not losing that much ground but there is a gap and this elite car just coming around the corner and so are the men Yeah, oh, gee, it's, it's, it's closable, but I'm not sure if he's actually going to or not. I think he might have picked it. 
Just opening up a little bit more now, isn't it, really? Yeah, you sense it's, it's, it's inches at a time or centimetres at a time, but it is opening up. And you can see the, the cadence of Kenboy is definitely more than uh, Ayoko just behind. Sydney Harbour, it is absolutely majestic. Beautiful homes, of course, the new Barangaroo Reserve and the Opera House, a thriving hub of culture, art and also history. This is our lead pairing in the men's elite and it looks like that uh, Kemboy has just applied a little bit of pressure to Aoko in the blue and pink. I think that pairing is just about to be uncoupled. Yeah, I think it, it's a marriage about <clears throat> to be separated. Well, as you said earlier, Steve, it's the marathon runner, Kemboy, against the track runner, Ayoko. But I don't know, maybe Kemboy's, maybe if he's by doing this, he might be just pushing himself a little bit too hard too early. And maybe at some stage later on, that will pay the price and Ayoko can come back at him. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I would have thought this is decisive. I mean, we're looking at the clock there coming up to an hour 40. If we're saying they're in the 212s, you know, it's 32, 33 minutes of running. So they're getting into the serious part of the event now. I think when you start within 10 kilometres to go, that's when mentally you start to say, OK, we're starting to really push towards the, the end of the event now. So that's a significant break if that's within 10k to the finish line. Right, and Ayako too, he's not used to this. He doesn't have that experience of the pressure that someone like Kenboy has got because he's run so many marathons, Kenboy. Mm. But Ayako, it's, it's just a case of what can I do? Can I hang on? Can I close him? You know, the gap's still there. It is still possible. But... Uh, it is a gap, simple as that. Yeah, and I, you know, Kemboy, it, Kemboy, it's his race to win. You know, he's he's the experienced man, the three sub two seven. So, for him, this is normal running. He really needs to to get tired, and I think that would give um, mentally probably give uh, Yako a, a bit of a lift. Mm. But at the mm. moment, you know, you're sensing that we're seeing, um, well, certainly one two at this point in time. Mm. So for Aoko, who is in the pink and blue colours, his marathon debut was 2015. Primarily a track athlete, was part of the 2018 Commonwealth Games, was fourth in the 5,000 metres in the pink and the blue. And for Kemboy, this is his 18th marathon. And as the boys have been saying, has uh, been 2.08, 2.07s, knows how to get the business done. Well, these two are not separating, are they? Kibaris and Jeptu have been together virtually all the way through. A bit of sharing of the pace, a bit of sort of like... Not too much. Not too not much. Not that I've seen. Where well, did you see Jep, that sharing? Jeptu was ahead just a, a, a bit, a bit of, uh, about two or three K ago. She, she sort of came to the front. She might not have taken it for very long, but she sort of said, I'm still here. I think yeah. that's what she was doing. She wasn't perhaps taking the pace, but she was saying, you know, I'm still in this race. You haven't, you haven't literally broken me yet. I think that's what it was. I, I'm sensing, I don't know if... Mercy Kabaras actually wants her to take over. I think she's quite happy in the front. Sometimes you'll you'll see them getting, a, you know, wavering across the road and suggesting it's your turn to take mm. some pace. But she seems quite happy to be leading. Mm. Quick quick drink here for Kemboy. Both of them taking a little bit of fluid. That's good. They're still sensible in that side of things. Not uh, missing it. Thinking they've just got to keep the pace going. Now, and there's a couple of uh, undul there's a couple of little undulations through this section of the course. So this will be a real test here. We will see if this gap widens. So, because this is testing, it's there's got just little ups and downs. Not much, but enough just to uh, allow you to gap. There's not they're not gapping. It stayed. You yes, might as well yeah. be on the back. I yeah. mean that gap has stayed basically that. What is that, 20 or 30 metres yeah, for the last 2K or so? Well, he's, okay. he's, there's gaps there, but he's not gapping. He's not moving away anymore. Here's Kurt Fernley. We know he's chasing an 11th title here at the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. What a great ambassador. He's, uh, of course, had his swan song on the, uh, the global stage monitors. At Com Games and with a victory, yeah. At uh, the Commonwealth Games, you know all about those. You've won a gold, a silver and a bronze there, as well as being mayor of the village in Melbourne you were, and chef de mission as well. Yeah, and had the pleasure to allow Kurt to carry the flag at the closing ceremony up on the Gold Coast earlier this year.
tell us a little bit about Kurt Fernley and, and what he means to the sport. Uh, he, he's transgressed the sport. He's just an Australian icon and he's such a humble person and leads by example, does so much of the, for the community. He's just a, he's, geez, just a ripper bloke. Five Paralympic Games, five World Para Athletics Championships, three Commonwealth Games as well and has won 10 Sydney marathons since 2006. Congratulations, Kurt Fernley. Another one notched up. 11. Terrific work by Kurt Fernley and a wonderful, wonderful athlete, a terrific ambassador, a great role model. He does it all, Kurt Fernley. Congratulations. A terrific result from Kurt there. As we head back to our leaders at the moment, and Kemboy doesn't seem to have been able to completely snap the elastic band so far, oh, Steve Monaghetti. Not quite. It's, <laughs> yeah, he's very, very close. Well, I, know where, I know where I'd rather be, let's be honest. It's, Kemboy's the experienced marathon runner, ran fast, and he's on his... You, you think he's, he's striding to victory here. I'm... I'm thinking that he's right. He, he probably he hasn't looked around for a little while now, which is a good sign. He's running, looking forward and running ahead, knowing that he's got Ayako in under pressure. Yeah, I think Ayako, that we saw before that, there was a, a gap of about 10, 50 metres. now starting to stretch even more, I think. We're up to 20 metres or so now. And when you get to that stage and he's looking comfortable, I think Ken Boy maybe thinks he's got this in the bag, I think. Yeah. We uh, saw Kurt Fernley cross the line just moments ago. Of course, Athletics Australia, a proud supporter and partner of the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival, allowing everyone and anyone to get out and enjoy the many benefits of walking and running. And the Australian Athletics Championship also on the line today, Monas. That's right. Yeah, it is. And uh, Kurt lining up again. I'm sure we'll see the women coming through soon as well. And this would be a challenging course. I know Kurt, he loves it. It's local, but I would have thought a bit of wind out on the course as well and can imagine these turns. So I think it's, uh, yeah. Well, I think Kurt's uh, maybe international career is over. I can see him coming back to this race for a few more years. Yeah, he loves it. He really does, doesn't he? Yeah. You know? And he's such a great contributor and he's such a positive role model that I hope he keep, continues to be involved. Well, there are so many volunteers, of course, involved as well. And with 37,000 competitors, everyone has to do their bit. Callum Gray is a St John Ambulance volunteer. He's got a couple of tips for runners to ensure they are safe and healthy when participating in the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. We'll have about 80 volunteers along the course at first aid posts, as well as a few bicycle emergency response teams. These are automatic external defibrillators. If someone has a cardiac arrest and their heart stops, that it will shock it back into a normal rhythm. So these are incredibly important and drastically increase the survival from a cardiac arrest and our teams will have them all along the course. These are automatic so they'll talk to you. They basically do all the analysis on whether to shock or not to shock by themselves. You press the on button, you put it on and then it tells you what to do from there. So our advice to people for having a safe and, and good race is to, one, make sure you're hydrated and don't get dehydrated. That's the major problem for most people. And other things are make sure you've got some food in your stomach, make sure that you put some sunscreen on and don't get sunburned, make sure you have a good rest the night before. Terrific work from Callum and Pont3, who are the organisers of the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival, work very closely with the New South Wales Government, New South Wales Ambulance and St John Ambulance to deliver massive medical service operation right around the city, in particular here at the finish line as well. Fully operational triage facility for critical care and also general first aid. So the organisers ensuring the best possible treatment for the runners. And just an update, we're getting uh, the 30k split for Kemboy at just under uh, 94, 134.133.58, which I translate again, testing my maths, but I'm, I'm backing myself in that just over that two hours and 12 minutes pace. So they're actually, they're not far behind the um, course record. They're only a minute behind that at this point in time. If he gets rolling, yeah, right. it, um, he could he could approach that course record. It's always funny, Steve, that watching Monas take his shoes on and off to be able to do this calculation. <laughs> it's quite extraordinary uh, the, the way he manages to do that. But as a maths teacher, he's got the, all the digits going. Yeah, I just wonder what he was like when he was in a race, whether he's actually sort of thinking in the race, well, I'm running at this pace. This is going to get me to the finish line in this, and that's going to get me to the finish line a bit further on. And he's calculating all the time. It you was know, difficult like... to run with the abacus, but he yeah. managed to do it. That's right. You know me too well. <laughs> 
think we're away now. I, I seriously think that um, that elastic band. Away. I reckon the, the elastic band is right. finally broken. It's stretched. It was pretty a long, a very long elastic band, but I think we've finally broken it. And Elijah Kimboy looks like he might be away. Still a bit of running. We don't want to, as I say, 2:12. You're looking at another um, you know, 25 minutes or so of running. Don't yeah. be fooled by that straight front-on shot again. I, yeah, I think that's a bigger gap than it will look. It shortens the gap. I think the gap widens with every stride at the moment with Kemboy. He's looking very confident. Yeah. And you'd expect that, really. I mean, even if he's running at 2.12 pace, that's, that's four, four minutes or so outside his best. So he's comfortable with this sort of terrain, I think. Yeah, I still think we look at the course record being 2.11. So I think that means that, you know, that this course is challenging. Whilst he is a 2.7, 2.8 runner, mm. you know, I think on this course you're probably looking at 2.10 and 2.11. So he's going, he's running really well. Well, the women are still uh, neck and neck, really, shadowing each other all the way. And Jep 2's gone to the front. Steve, are you a bit worried the fact that she wasn't doing much pace no, making? No, but happy now. She's actually doing a, a good job again. She's starting to push up this hill. And you can see just behind there the figure of Kibaris just locking on, as usual. Our women's leaders heading into Darling Harbour again. Of course, Sydney's most popular attractions there, including Madame Tussauds. Also, Sea Life, Sydney Aquarium and Wildlife Sydney as well. Fantastic aerial shot there from the helicopter. I mean, beautiful clear skies here, giving us a chance to look down. There's the leader up at front, just passing under. There he is, Ken Boy. And at least... 150 metres behind now, the uh, the chaser, a Yako, not really making any grounds at all. As uh, Steve said, that to camera angle foreshortening it, really, he's a long way back at the moment. So, Monas, how hard is it now for our lead athlete to just keep in his own mind? I've, I've managed to establish a break. How hard is it to then keep the, the foot down uh, on the throttle and, and make sure that you ensure that break and, I suppose, break the heart of the athletes behind you? Yeah, I, I think he's an experienced runner. So, really, it's just a matter of now. He'd be checking in with his body, so intrinsically looking at how are my legs travelling, how's the energy, keep the fluids up. So... If, if all he's worried about now is hitting the wall, getting fatigued. Do you ever get, if, if you hit a period where you're not feeling great, you're feeling tired, do you ever get a second wind in America? Do you actually sort of go through that and think, I think I'm actually not feeling too bad now? You do early, not at this point. By now, any fatigue and any sign of fatigue now is, is danger because you're unlikely to come out of it. Early on, you can have your ups and downs, bad patches, might get a stitch, you know, different phases where you don't feel great. By now, any fatigue will be serious fatigue that's doesn't, unlikely to go, go away. away. No, yep. unlikely to go away, yeah. But this is what you're trained for. This is the long runs. You know, we talk about how important it is to do your long running, and that's where you're calling in that now. So... Ken Boy's in front. His race is for him to, to win, and he's thinking, you know, the, the three-hour runs in the Rift Valley, all of those 200-plus kilometres a week. He's calling them in now, saying, I'm going to win this race because of that work that I've done. So it's very much a mental game, backing himself in and running with good rhythm and efficiency to the finish. For those watching at home, uh, the understanding, or my understanding of, uh, it, with marathon training, is that the feeling is if you can get to 35 k's, then your chance to be able to push through for 42 as a as a public runner as an average runner if yeah. you can achieve that milestone i mean these guys obviously do hundreds of kilometers a week as you, as you mentioned but for the average runner if you can get to 35 then 42 is achievable that's right and that's normally about 18 in the half so 18 for a 21 yep so you're probably i like 36 37 because there's a drink station at 30 and it, i think within 5k of the finish we think a park run or a lot of people will think about a 5k run so when you're within 5k of the finish line you're thinking well I'm probably going to make it now and whether I run a PB or not but distance wise you're probably going to be okay. So taking that to the next stage are you saying that in the last say 5k no one accelerates it's actually people that slow down that changes the race result? Well I often say it isn't always the case because they've stepped it up in the marathon now but I used to say that the person who won the marathon was the one who slowed down the least so you only actually have to keep your pace. I, I, you didn't have to inject anything. You would maybe put in a surge, but generally your pace, if you can hold your pace from the start to the finish at you know the, what the paces are going or what they started at, you will win the race. 
bizarre but true. And it's, uh, it seems like you're just jogging early. So but when that you pace see these, sometimes hard. when you see these marathons, international marathons, where it looks like someone's really pushing the pace on and catching the gap, it's not that. It's the case that the guy in front or whatever is slowing down more than the other guy. Correct. See so our wheelchair athletes continue to come in. It's staggering to think that 5,000 crowd control banners are used to line the course here. I think that's Dawes. That's Eliza. Yeah, I think that's Dawes coming through there. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So our wheelchair competitors, and that is the winner there in the females. Just making their way across the finish line. I'm not sure that might be Christy Dawes, actually. I'm not sure. I yeah, think, I think it might it have was. been Christy yeah. crossing the line there. So. Well, and the lone the figure wind. now of Kenboy, he is literally on his own, but to come in round the corner, again, <laughs> not too far behind, but far enough, I think, is a Yako. There he is. He's not slowing down, is he, really, as such? His, his style is still pretty good, Steve. Yeah, I mean, his legs are okay. I always look at those quads and the knee lift. Is, it, is he starting to get into a shuffle or not? I'm not sure. I haven't really, he's still, no, he's still got a bit of knee lift there, so he's probably okay. So he's still, he's, he's within striking range. I still think Kemboy, he's got a lot, see his rhythm and his knee lift is a lot more flowing. So don't worry about the grimace on his face. It's more the the legs and he, his efficiency across his body. So he's still travelling pretty well. Yeah, well, that's right. Both of them are running well, but Kemboy's running a little bit better, put it that way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Yoko's actually hanging in more than I expected. You know, a track runner, once you drop off, and, you know, he's run a 60, 26 half, so he's a quality distance runner, but I'm a little bit surprised. The family run, of course, is one to behold, and again, you get the opportunity to head over the Sydney Harbour Bridge. It's wonderful, the family run. It does finish there at the conservatory, and you can see the run all the way through. A great entry point for... So many young children to be involved, families, you see pushers and prams being pushed. And we head to the start of the family run. Look at that, there's some serious looking youthful Australians in there wanting to be able to achieve PBs. Great effort. I think the key thing here, Monas and Steve Ovet, is to stay upright. Yes. <laughs> we talk about pacing yourself. They, don't, they didn't get that lesson. Those kids are very enthusiastic, and yeah, hopefully they'll all have a good experience. And this is the future, and it's great to see so many out there having a red-hot go. And uh, we say there's an event for everybody, and this proves it. I love it. I love the fact that all the kids were at the front. The elite athletes, as it were, of the front run are at the front there, and the mum and dads are at the back with the prams and the backpacks and everything else to keep everything going. Yeah. So the family run underway, and look, what a, a great thing for mums and dads, friends and family to all be able to run together, and as we know, it'll be the anywhere between 6 and probably 15 will be herring off at the front, everyone else will be bringing up the rear. And so many females and women running now, and... I see that out when I'm out running. So many women out running now. Terrific scenes. A huge Sunday morning. You're watching the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. So, back with our lead male runner. Congratulations to everyone that's already competed, got across the line, saw the start to the family run. But of course, people continue to flood in here at the Opera House as well at the forecourt. Well, he's running on the boards at the moment, isn't he? <clears throat> and uh, well, Kubaris just flashing back to the women. Now she's broken Jep too by the looks of things. And uh, that's a gap again of about 100 metres or so, isn't it? Yeah. And again, through that slightly undulating part of the course. So I think that's probably where she's used the course to her advantage. Ken Boy, you can just see now this gap really is starting to lengthen now. Yeah. So Yoko is, what, some 20, 200 metres behind, just coming around the bend there, 200 metres behind. His pace is slowing a little bit, Ken Boy. You know, he is struggling a little bit. You've got to be in a marathon at this stage. But that uh, gap, I think, is significant. Mm. He's sweating. You see the sweat there on his brow. I'm not 
not sure. You know, we say it's pretty good running conditions, but compared to yesterday, it's when it was in the 30s, but it, it's still up to probably 14 or 15, I think at a high of 19 today. So at this stage of the race, he was very, very conscientious with his fluids, though, so I think he's travelling pretty well. Yeah. Eiko still running well. Still not any real signs of tightness. The carriage of his arms may be up a little bit more, a little bit stiffer in his upper body. But having said that, he's still running well. I think he knows he's got second place sealed up. He doesn't look like he's straining, does no, he? He's obviously no. hurting a bit more on the inside than he's showing there externally, but um, he actually looks pretty good. It was a lonely race from here on in for Ken Boy. He's... Uh, Closing, closing in on the finish, and he's looking strong. He's probably got, I reckon he's almost coming up to two hours now, so about 4K of running, so that's that's not far. He'd be he'd starting to get his sights on that finish line now. So the Kenyan has been dominant throughout uh, this event. It's the last bit of uh, a fluid be taken in. Never missed, never missed the beat on taking fluids on all the way through. Ken Boyd did everything right. Located on the shores of Sydney Harbour in the North Shore suburb of Mossman, Taronga Zoo Animal Sanctuary in the heart of the city, world class. It's a Sydney icon. You can take a ferry across to Taronga, hop on the Sky Safari cable car if you'd like to. Wonderful views and it cares for 4,000 animals from 350 species, many of which are threatened as well. If you're just joining us, this is our leader, Elijah Kemboy of Kenya and the 34-year-old in his 18th. This is now his 19th marathon, and he's certainly doing it in imperious style at the moment. Steve Modigetti and Steve Ovet with me in commentary, and uh, he's certainly broken the race right open now. Winding his way back towards us here at the finish line, and we think he's about 200 metres ahead of here, our second place, Thomas Ayiko from Uganda. They ran together for lots of the event, and a significant break about two or three kilometres ago. And Ken Boy is away now and looking pretty strong. And there's back to, I'm assuming, third place, Bahanu, who was with them for a long way as well. So he's, he's looking like he's hanging in there OK. Yeah, I was going to say, I wanted to, good to see how far he is behind uh, Ayaku there because he was looking as if he's still running quite well. Yeah. And he was coming round those switch bends round the, uh, the side of the course that we've seen just recently from uh, Ken Boy. So he can't be that far back. And there's two hours clicked over, and always that's a significant mark. You certainly love to see the two, the front of the clock, because you know you're, you're within sight of the finish line, if that's the case. If you're having a good day, anyway, that's for sure at the top end. So they're going well and approaching that, I'm assuming, still close. To, I think he's held his form pretty well, so I'm, I'm thinking they'd be still in that 2.12. We have seen our wheelchair athletes get across the line. Aloise Wellings is with them now. I'm with the winner of the wheelchair event, Kurt Fernley. He's a legend of Australia. Well done, Kurt. <laughs> yeah, thanks. It was a beautiful day. The wind is a bit high. It's a little chilly, but it's, it's always great to win this run. And you managed to knock off the young gun today. How did that play out? Yeah, he was there with me right up until the last probably 10 minutes, the last five, five to 10 K. So... He's tough, mate. He's got a long future. He's uh, just keeps getting better. But uh, today I had a cracker. And uh, after the Commonwealth Games, you told me you're retiring. So obviously that was a lie. Uh, what's next for you in retirement? Look, I'm retiring from uh, the Australian teams. I'm retiring from Paralympics and Com Games. But I'm going to run until they bury me in a gutter somewhere. I feel better when I'm running. I feel, I feel happier. I feel like I enjoy life more when I'm moving. So I'll be around this run for a bit. Great. We hope you go forever too, Kurt. Thanks. Thanks for coming and we'll see you next year. Sounds good. I'm with Eliza O'Connell, the winner of the Women's Wheelchair event. You've just finished. How did the race go for you? Uh, look, it was a pretty lonely race out there. It was pretty windy, but uh, still fantastic. Uh, every marathon's a good race. And this is your first time to Sydney to do the Blackmores Sydney Running Festival? Yeah, first time up in Sydney and fantastic race. It was more like a cyclocross event for us wheelies, but absolutely fantastic. I'll be back next year for sure. Well done. See you next year. Thank you.
Terrific athlete, of course, Eliza. Took a bit of a break, 10-year break. She returned to the sport in 2016, and this year at the Gold Coast, also featured in the medals there. So it's been quite a year for Eliza yeah, Alt-Connell. Silver medal in the, in the marathon up at the Gold That's Coast. That's right, and fifth in the 1,500 metres as well. So back to our lead runner in the men's division. And he's certainly been pretty much, I suppose, steering the ship from the get-go. Has this man from Kenya just turned 34 this week, Elijah Kimboy, and now getting towards the closing stages. This man's been on his shoulder for much of it, but now it appears that he is running for second. And yeah. he, uh, he looks as if he's slowing down, he does, doesn't he, yeah. Steve? Yeah, he's yeah. suffering now. This is the this is the trouble with, uh, as Steve was saying, with track athletes moving up to the marathon. That last part of the marathon really does take its toll. And I just notice he's heavy on the ground. The steps are not as flowing and as bouncy as what they were. So working hard, but hopefully he'll hang in there and uh, take out second. Well, back to the women's race, really, and uh, a bit of a break on here, Steve. Yes, Maris is away, and getting some split times through just a little bit outside the women's record so looking at about just low 230 so 231 pace so still really good running i think the women are just about three minutes behind the record uh for the course the men a little bit closer so the men have been running well i think they've obviously been run, uh, running harder further in the marathon the women were a bunch together weren't they for a, for a long time before there was a real surge and that may be costing them an overall time but having said that it's about it's about winning it's about com competition yeah, isn't it? yeah still good running so gamita holds the record at 2 11 18 of the ethiopian notching that time in 2014. And i think the women's record we're talking about is um Haji. Haji, last year 228.04 so uh, that if they're running low 230s, and here we're seeing, we think, in a mid-212s, it's still very good running. And the windy conditions, too. Yeah, yeah right. so he's, he's doing well, Kenboy, really. I mean, he has pushed it on, as Ian was saying. You know, richly, virtually from the gun, he was in the front, and apart from occasionally when he let uh, Ayaku or whatever just take the pace for a little bit, he's been motoring on all yeah. the way through. Again, through uh, Barangaroo Reserve, they're looking beautiful running through there. He was a pre-race favourite, but you still got to deliver. Every day in a marathon's a, another well, day. So we do, you, do, you have a, do you have a favourite in a marathon? Yeah. You know, I, I think it's such a, a such a long way that you sometimes don't know who's going to win it. Barangaroo Reserve, of course, has been recently developed and it looks an absolute peach, but one of the most iconic scenes in Sydney. And if you get here to Sydney Town, you need to head to Bondi Beach. With golden sands, the deep blue ocean and perfect waves for surfing and swimming, it's no wonder Bondi is one of the world's most famous beaches. It's one of Sydney's most popular beaches for swimming, surfing, promenading and people watching. The waves here suit all levels of experience. Only 20 minutes from Sydney's city centre. There's a wide array of bars, cafes, restaurants and accommodation nearby making Bondi the perfect summer getaway. Terrific scenes, Bondi Beach. Yeah, That's Sydney. where you go with your Guinness World Record surfboard. Don't get down to Bondi after <laughs> you've broken a world record or whatever is happening today. I was actually rescued from Bondi Beach by one of the surf lifeguards. That's a true story. I he, didn't pay them no, enough. No, oh, no, no. He pulled God. me out. He pulled me out, and he, he was, he was, he's over the top of me. He said, and he recognised me. He said, "You're Steve, aren't you?" I said, "Yes." He said, "He said uh, you're the runner." I said, "Yes." He said, "Well, you're no swimmer." <laughs> <laughs> God, that's, that's serious, isn't yeah, it? It made the papers, yeah. 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 Well, we're lucky to have you here then. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you. I made it back. <laughs> Moi, well, back to the serious stuff. Ken Boy now taking a bit more fluid on again. He's done everything right, this man. And, and he's not far away now, Steve. What is no, he, about six minutes or so from, from hitting the line? That's probably... The, they normally have a drink station around 40k, so I reckon he's probably got a couple of k to go. And we sense that he's down, uh, down around the harbour. About to, I think he may be about to head back under the, the Harbour Bridge. And when you come under the Harbour Bridge, you look across to the Opera House, I think then you can start saying, I'm not far from home. Mm. Hey, Yoko, yeah, you can see, unfortunately, he is really suffering. Knees are not coming up very high. Arms have dropped a little bit. 
And that's the toll that the marathon takes, I think. He's almost into the marathon shuffle. He's still, and we shouldn't underestimate, he's still running well, but it's completely different to that track flow and rhythm where you're mm. really up and about. He's, he's almost into a very efficient trying to just get every step in one in front of another is, is this, to head towards the Is this the a learning line. curve for someone like him, though, that next marathon he does, he feels a bit better and he gets a bit better at doing it? Or is it something which or is inherent might, in the body? You know, might chip away at you and, mm. and just add to the fear factor sometimes. It'll go either way. He can bounce back and go, OK, this is what I need to do to get it... Uh, he, right to the finish next time. I was there for 28k, 30k. Or he can say, oh, gee, I'll back, go back, back to the back track. To track. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of hard work, that yeah. marathon. <laughs> Might leave it to uh, someone else. And on the left-hand part of the screen there, you can see all of those runners that participate in it. 37,000 people are part of the Blackmores Sydney Running Festival. And it's magnificent that in the marathon, you run the same track, the same distance, you have the same drink stations, you see the same scenery. It's marvellous for the average participant to be able to do the same things as what the elite runners are doing right now. That's exactly it, Ian. You can, don't have to spectate, you can participate, and it's one of our great attractions of, of our sport, I reckon. And as I mentioned, just under the Sydney Harbour Bridge, so Kim Boy on his way home now, Turn got a little, there's a little rise, and then he's basically down into Circular Quay and, and heading for home. So he'll make his way all the way around through Circular Quay, and of course, at Darling Harbour, Barangaroo Precinct is behind him, yeah. and Circular, he, Circular Quay, rather, the home of Sydney's major ferry terminal, busy transport hub, basically since the early days of colonisation and the surrounding. Buildings transformed for Vivid Sydney, the Southern Hemisphere's largest festival of light, music and ideas. And they'd headed through the Rocks Precinct earlier. And that is uh, the oldest area in Australia in terms of uh, that development. A wonderful mix there, including the Museum of Contemporary Art Australia in that Rocks Precinct. And if you didn't know the rocks, the name obviously comes from, you know, the limestone rock that they've cut. It, it does, Steve. Yeah. That's exactly right, <laughs> well, Proves I do listen <laughs> occasionally. <laughs> Yes, it was a moment of epiphany for Monas as he worked out the labelling of that area. I learn something every day working with you two. Ken Boy. There's that rise, so he's yeah. over that. Not far to go. His rhythm is slightly slower, Steve, isn't it? But he's, he's you know, he's, he knows what he's got to do. I still love it. Look at those, that foot plant. He's almost still on his toes. Mm. He's, that's, it's a really good marathon style. He's, he's going well and holding that form. And it's all about holding your form and, and being as efficient as you can. And certainly at this part of the course, it's all about concentration and just making sure you are just holding together as you approach that finish line. The other runners we can see with the red bibs, part of the half marathon contingent. And they also will be working their way around the circular key area and heading for home here at the forecourt of the Sydney Opera House. And I just looked across and... I can see them. He is within oh, yes. 500 metres, so he is he's certainly going to be in that 212. We're on the money, so uh, a really good run. Uh, this is a better run and faster run than I've probably given him credit for. I know we say he's a 2728 runner, but you know on this course, course record 21118, he's just outside that. You know this that record's about to come up now as he's coming around in front of the. Where the ferries depart at Circular Quay, so he's, you know he's certainly a couple of minutes away, and it's it's a you know a good run in what I think may be slightly challenging conditions today. Yeah, there right. is the course record of two eleven eighteen. It's just fallen through there, but this is now about the win for Kemboy. Yeah, having said that though, he's taken the pace almost all the way himself. It's almost been a solo run because there's only occasionally where he has relinquished it to have a little bit of a break. From here, from virtually from gun to take, this man has dominated the race, and he deserves to win. As he and hopefully he can enjoy a bit of a run into the finish. Now it's not that sprint finish that sometimes we spoke about. He can really enjoy the moment as he turns. He's probably almost turning into the straightaway, and he runs basically up to the opera house from here. And the great thing is, you can see the crowds lining the barricades. A lot of people have finished running already. Whatever they've chosen, the family, the bridge, uh, the half and they've folded back to be a part of the crowd to uh, watch our elite runners who 
apply their trade on the global stage, and it's terrific to have 66 countries represented here at the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival today. Well, a beautiful run from this man, really. He's done everything right, as I said before, and the crowd appreciating it. Just checking his watch again, just seeing where he is, and he's not far off that record. And the conditions, as we said, pretty windy out there for most of the course. And he's been taking most of the brunt of it himself. He has. And he's looking at the watch. Probably, you know, for pride, he might want to just duck under 2.13. I think that's going to be just out of his reach. But he's happy now, taking the accolades from the crowd. Really enjoying this moment. He will be our winner of the Sydney Marathon in 2018. He puts that on his CV and never to be taken away. Terrific milestone. Gold label race in IAAF conditions. So up there with Boston Ladies and, and New York the and the other great marathons right around the world. I got married on the and course. Major Kimboy making well his way towards the finish line. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes the winner of the marathon. It is Kimboy. Great atmosphere. And Elijah Kimboy, he turned 34 earlier this week and he's handed himself a birthday present with the title of the Blackmoors Sydney Marathon to add to his CV. Congratulations, Elijah Kimboy. Even a bit of sprint at the end. He had still had something in his legs, didn't he, towards the end there. And he gave it everything he had. Great run, really was a great run. It's almost the perfect marathon execution today. He's delivered, and as we say, went in as a race favourite, has run faster, but I reckon he's, he'd be really happy with that. A race plan all went to, to plan as he measured his run, and, and he's won fairly comfortably in the end. Well, you would suggest that uh, Aoko has now settled, and that's probably not the right, but, but second place is assuredly his. He hasn't necessarily had to push. Here he comes in now. The Ugandan athlete, 22-year-old, and primarily a track athlete, so this has been certainly an education for Ayoko. Tired legs, tired legs from Ayoko. You can see that he really is just hanging in, but he's done all he had to do to get second place. It's always, I always say that if someone was to approach him, he may struggle to lift because his body's done. He's, um, he's experienced the marathon today. Still a great run to run second. He's on the dice. He'd be happy with that. But he's certainly uh, battled that body. is just going to get him over the line. Great to see the half marathoners as well. Clapping our marathon podium position getters on their way through as well. I think he'd be happy to see us. I think he'd be happy to get up and across the line. Yeah. He's a tired man there. I think he, uh, he really has done well. He hung on as long as he possibly could, and he helped as best he could to Kenboy, taking a little bit of the pace, but in doing that, I think he may have sacrificed himself early on, and he suffered ever since, really. Well, he could have settled for second a long way out, but he put himself in the race, so good on him. So this is Thomas Ayoko from Uganda, the 22-year-old. He's been fourth at the Commonwealth Games this year in the 5,000 metres. He's figured prominently in cross country. A London Olympian as well in the 10,000 metres. And Thomas Aiko, second across the line in the Blackmoors Sydney Marathon. Just under 217 and good camaraderie there, congratulating each other as they see each other. They were together for a lot of the race. Not too much congratulations then, but they are now. Now, this man has been working by himself for the majority of this event. Once that lead group really started to splinter, he's been working hard and wasn't as far back as what maybe you might have expected. Well, I was going to say, Bahadu really has done really well. He wasn't that far back. And uh, maybe if, you know, if he just put his charge on a little bit earlier, he could have caught second place there. But, you know, maybe he didn't know how far he was behind. He was closing quickly. Yeah. I think he may have seen, I reckon with the course here, he would have got a bit of a look up, but um, he gave it his best shot. Still on the dose, and uh, one, two, three, we have it there. So Bahani of Ethiopia rounding out the podium to the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival. Turn our attention back to our lead females. A 
Mercy Cabarrus on her own, working hard now. I think the big gap is opening up. Can't even see where the second woman is in this race. So she's run well. She is the quality in this race. And I think, Steve, looking fairly comfortable. Rhythm's good. Cadence good. Yeah, again, very good running action and still running. See that foot plant still bouncing off the ground. So not hasn't got that heavy, flat uh, sounding shoe plant just yet so yeah going well Eunice jet to some way up we is in second place we didn't see her there so she's some way back first lady in the marathon so you can see this the bridge runners they are the ones with the blue are you excited their uh, bibs and the uh, bridge run of course a terrific one for 10 kilometers getting to cross the uh, magnificent coat hanger as well so 219 on the clock so we're thinking in the low 230s, so only about um, three or four k of running to go. There's Vlad Shatroff there who can, who can run, so give you some idea of the quality of, of the runner here by Mercy Cabarrus. Yeah, well, she's using that maybe to key off him. It's good. Maybe, and you can see, he decided he doesn't really want to be overtaken by one of the women, so he's put a bit of a spurt on there, didn't he? Yeah, Vlad actually was under the Commonwealth qualifying time. The, uh, the marathon. So he's a quality athlete. Runs comrades like likes that Bruce Ford ice, that long stuff, so he likes his longer running as well for Newcastle. This is his seventh career marathon for Vlad. He made his debut in Melbourne at 2012, running a 2.21.05. Well, Mercy's got a got him in his sights. Got a you know he's. Uh, Opening up a little bit of a gap, but she's running really well at the moment. It actually works well for Mercy, though, yeah, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Gives us something in this last part of the race where the mind starts to wander. She's looking around, but there's no one really behind her. She's she's clear, slowing a bit, but she goes around the corners, checking no, again. Right. But it gives us something to aim at, really, if you've got a person in front of you to uh, key off. Under the gravel. So yeah, just checking, I think, that she's safe. You never know. You'd hate to get a surprise if someone is closing on you, but... I'm always surprised that they have a bit of a look because they've dropped her. She's dropped Jeff to about 10 minutes ago. Yeah, I don't think she's going to close checking on Checking all so. the time over her shoulder. She's obviously worried. Maybe she's feeling a bit tired or starting to feel even tired. And she's obviously cautious that uh, something might be coming a lot quicker than she actually thinks. But I can't see I can't see Jeff to anywhere in sight. No. Mercy Cabarrus from Kenya. If you love to shop, then Sydney is fabulous. International labels, innovative designers, master artisans and beautiful arcades, including the 19th century grandeur of the Queen Victoria building, shopping elegance, three levels devoted to fashion, jewellery and gifts as well. If you love to shop, head to Sydney. And we've seen our men's winner cross the line and congratulations to Elijah Kemboy. We've now got our women's elite runners coming in. And this is Kenyan Mercy Gabaris, the 34-year-old who has established a nice handy lead over her compatriot Eunice Cheptu, who is somewhat in the background. And around Barangaroo Reserve there. So then head back into the harbour, under that Sydney Harbour Bridge. So this is probably when you're sort of just a little bit you're not siding the finish line yet so you still probably got a bit of work to do it's mm. not quite you know you, psychologically once you get under the harbour bridge i think you probably know you're, you're home but here you still got to get a bit of running hold your form yeah she's running well mm. she really is this is going to be obviously a double for kenya in the in the marathons that's a good performance from then in the team anyway yeah well it was elijah kembu the Kimboy who flew the flag early for Kenya. Here he is after the race. I'm at the finish line with Elijah Kemboy, winner of the men's marathon here today at the Sydney Blackmore's Sydney Running Festival. Well done, Elijah. How did it feel? Yeah, I'm feeling okay. First of all, I thank God. Are you happy with your time? Yes, I'm happy. Is this your first time to run this race? Uh, it is my first time to run in uh, Australia. Well done. What's next for you? Um, I'm going back. Maybe, maybe another three months. I, 
And it is, I know that it is. Well, you were so dominant today. Well done. We hope to see you back again next year. Yes, uh, I come. And terrific work by Elijah Kemboy. Marvellous and great to have the athletes coming here to represent so many different countries. First time here in Australia, but he says, I'm coming back. Yeah. yeah. And I think he was travelling pretty well. He, uh, he, as I say, he delivered today, executed the plan very well and, and deservedly won the race fairly comfortably in the end. So too, this woman. Yeah, and Mercy, Mercy Cabarrus Mercy. has done everything right, hasn't she, really? And she ran 2.27 in Seoul in March this year, so she's a she's a quality athlete. Yeah, she's looking over her shoulder, and this is the chaser, Jep2. Well, Jep2, we're not sure how far she is behind because we haven't had any long shots, really, or aerial shots, but uh, she's still running well, but she hasn't been in sight when we've had a quick look at uh, Kibaras at some stage there. Checking over her shoulder again, these women have been so far ahead, these two of the rest of the field, I don't think anybody is going to come up and challenge them for one and two. It shows how the mental strain, though, whilst it looks like, you know, we're seeing the winner looking around as if she's worried, but she's winning the race, so she, why would she be worried? But it shows that the mental trauma of running a marathon is mentally very difficult just to... You've got to hold your own form, and as you're getting tired and fatiguing, you know, you're hoping that someone else isn't surprising and you're coming through. But what did why you would do? They? What did you do, Monas, to just switch yourself? Did you do song lyrics? Did you recite poetry? How did you get yourself through 42 kilometres? Yeah, it was Stairway to Heaven because it was a very long song. <laughs> no, you focus and, you know, you think about um, the people and the reasons you're doing it and calling in all the training. And I never looked behind. It was one of my rules. Never wore a watch and never looked behind. Because, I, you know, I was always thinking if it, it's a sign of weakness and I'm not worried about the time. I'm racing, so no watch. And I never look behind because, you know, it's about me running forward and on, onward and upward. And don't give them a psychological advantage. And I'm worried about where they are. I'm the one that's well, hopefully up the front. Me. Yeah, that's the theory. And even if you wherever you're placed, you know, you're not going to gain anything by looking behind. I always think, you know, focus forward and focus on your own race. There are some things you can control. In a marathon, it's difficult enough to overcome the marathon. Focus on, on what you can control. Be in the moment now. Don't be worried about what other people do. I can't control that. I can react to it, but I can't control it. This is Eunice Chiptu, who made her marathon debut in Nairobi back in 2009. Ran a 2.44 there. Personal best is a 2.26 at Eindhoven last year. If she keeps looking around, she might as well turn around and run backwards. <laughs> yeah, Gee. but that's quite true, isn't it? If yeah. you're out the front, everyone else has to worry about you. Yeah, and run on like you're in control of the race. I mean, we're seeing that from Mercy Cabarra. She's It's her race to lose. She now just holds form, continues to run around through this section. She looks across to the finish line and she knows she's not far away now. She's within a couple of K of the finish line. She's actually running. She's still full of running. And she should be confident and pushing ahead and looking forward and enjoying it. It's her race. I don't know enjoying it, but she's obviously actually get tired of the doubts must creep in, I think. That's why they're always continually checking. You just doubt your body. You doubt that you're running fast enough that someone's not catching you, and it must linger there. I, I, I would be the other side. I know what you're saying, Steve, and I totally agree with you. You're a marathon, but I check. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> I, yeah. I would check, and I'll make sure that no one's catching me. Even if they weren't catching me, I couldn't do anything about it. I still want to know about it. I'm that sort of person. Well, I suppose what you would do is maybe check the splits or have someone on the side yelling. If you're holding your pace or you're only slowing a little bit, it's highly unlikely anyone's going to be catching you. So you might be dropping three or four seconds per kilometre, but they're not going to catch you. If you've established a one or two minute lead, then they're not going to catch you on that. I think this could be the third placer in the women's, but we're not sure. We're just getting flashes of, of some of the other athletes in the race. Yeah, Denso, who's in the pack early, wearing the white T-shirt. So she's uh, she looks good to yeah. her legs. Running with that forward lean a little bit, but certainly um, seems to be running on strongly. So that could, be, at a, that could be the third place, Ian. Yeah, looking at a Kenyan double here, and for the men, the Kenyans have certainly dominated. Today is the tenth win for a Kenyan athlete. Japan in second position with four, and it's Ethiopia in the women's side that have got six wins. And this Kenyan win, if she can get there, will be the second win That's for right. Kenya. And we sort of think that the Kenyans dominate marathon running around the world, but not as much here. Certainly not in the women's event. 
But today, uh, dominating this race, certainly Mercy Cabarrus. So the top five for the men, Kenya, Japan, Tanzania, Ethiopia, and New Zealand. And for the women, it is Ethiopia, Australia, with five wins, Japan, Kenya, and New Zealand. And we're hearing that that third place female is in Ash Gatacha. She's only a couple of minutes behind uh, uh, Mercy and Eunice, so she, she's actually running really well. Well on. Beautiful scenes around the bottom part of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And you can see those with some work in front of them to the left hand of your screen there and those that are heading towards the sanctuary of the finish line here at the Sydney Opera House. Wonderful, wonderful, spectacular scenes. Great vistas to be running through. But for these elite runners, they'll be concentrating on getting across the line. So there, I think we're seeing an aerial of that gap. I think sure if it's first or so I think that might be between second and third where our third runner might be running down second so we could dig with it could still be some action here as we say marathons very unpredictable and we could get a, a late surprise here in the women's event so this is our leader Mercy Cabarrus we broke it open about the midway point and managed just to stretch it out 34 year old She's on the tiles of Circular Key, so she's within a K of the finish, so she's probably OK. Still running well, so she looks like she's fine. I reckon we're seeing a battle for um, second and third. Well, she's not tiring. She's looking no. good. She's uh, taking the corners well, saying that she's uh, still got some strength in her legs to take those corners, which is good. Looking back, still can't see anybody anywhere near her, really. So I think this is, without question, perhaps the winner of the race. We have to wait and see who's going to be second or third, because it looks as if it's a bit of a, a race coming on there, really. Yeah, I think so. Terrific support as well, and as a part of this event, Breast Cancer Network Australia and Beyond Blue, the two chosen charities this year, and over 80 other personal charities amongst the 37,000 runners. So some great money being raised, nearly $20 million across the duration this is the 18th edition of the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. And I reckon Mercy Cabarrus has turned. It's mm. almost into the straight. And there's our battle. No, oh, no, she's safe. So it makes that final turn. And it's almost a straight run into the finish line now. And if we're looking at that time, that's still, that's really good running. As we say, the course record of 2.28, not in doubt, but um, still good running in what could have been challenging conditions today for Mercy making her way past some of the beautiful restaurants form the peninsula out to the Sydney Opera House. Vlad Chatrov has held her off, but um, really good running for Mercy Cabarrus. She's working her way through the different coloured bibs. Of course, there is four different events. There's the family run, there's the bridge run, the half marathon and the marathon. And we're looking at our women's marathon leader likely winner at the moment with just a couple of hundred meters to go before she crosses the finish line another great run from uh, another great kenyan really they really do produce talent upon talent oh, don't they oh. and mercy's had a great run here today everything right again looking very comfortable all the way to the line Second place in the Australian. Mercy Matthew Cox just ahead of Reckon. There's Ron. There's Mercy. We'll see her now as she comes to the finish line. A terrific effort from the 34 year old from Kenya. Personal best at Seoul of 226. But Mercy Cabarrus makes it a Kenyan double at the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival, winning the women's marathon. Grabbing that hamstring, I think she might have been getting, getting a bit of a tightness. A bit of a twinge, I think, over the yeah. last part of the race. Jep2 coming through now in second place, looking a little bit more tired. But having said that, again, comfortable in second place. Not that far behind. I'm surprised she's hung on that well. So within um, 20 or 30 seconds of our winner. So that's good running. Good on yes. you, mate. Well done. Thanks for being involved here so this Elijah Kimboy taking it out for the men and Mercy Kabaris taking it out for the women. Two 34-year-olds from Kenya. So place. great day on, for the Kenyan come runners. Second lady across yeah. the line. Silver position. 
And it's Jip 2, Jip two. also of Kenya. Jip 2, second place in the marathon. Getting across the line now. Some hard yards on the way home for her, I would thought. I'm tired body there, really. Oh, yeah. Very tired, but good on up. Good race. Yep, very good running. Happy to finish, but... What's your sense when you finish, Monas, in terms of relief, the emotion, Well, you can let it all... Happy? Yeah, yeah. yeah, normally it's actually... If you're on the day, it's, it's a good day. I know we're hard on some of these athletes, and any, any marathon that you're on the day has been a good day, let me tell you that, so... It's really joy, and you can let all the emotion show. You try to keep it all in whilst you're running. Once you cross the finish line, you can let all that emotion come out. Rodergo now coming through. She was in that group of about five or six very early on in the yes. race. And we didn't see much of her, really, because the uh, other two broke away, and we followed them all the way through the latter part of the race. But she was just on her own here, and she's coming through. Run a solo race for a great deal of this marathon. So a great performance from her in third. Yeah, that's really good running. So maybe just got in that pace and, and raced oh, very well. And she wasn't, yeah, she was, I think she was closing on our um, on our first two in that last few Ks. Yeah, she, she virtually has run a very hard race on her own all the way. The other two maybe had each other to key off for a lot longer. But she was really in no man's land for a great deal of the time. Some scorching times in the 10 kilometre events as well. We'll get to those in just a moment, but this Rounds out the podium in the women's event. And congratulations, Durgo, finishing in third position there. But the winner across the line was Mercy Cabarrus from Kenya, the 34-year-old. Congratulations to all our finishers. Wonderful day. What a Sunday morning. The Opera House, you can see a hive of activity at the finish for the Sydney Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. Look at all those people and friends and family supporters coming through, loads of athletes and you can see at the top of the screen there uh, the finish for the, the family run up towards the conservatory there and here the big sales of the Sydney Opera House for the other no three events. That is, a, that is a fantastic shot wasn't yeah, it? It, great it was shot. absolutely unbelievable, you're never going to see that sort of thing. And you know, the, else in the world, it was just spectacular. And the village at the end of a marathon where you go up, catch up yeah, with family right. and friends, yep. just tell the top some stories yep. about the event. It's, it's a wonderful way of just uh, enjoying the moment. And we're finishing at the Opera House right by the harbour there. Nice to be near the water when you finish. I think it's a calming influence there, I think. It's beautiful. Well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, we'd have to say it's got to be one of the world's great... Uh, finishes to an event. I, I don't think you, know, you think of Berlin that's on later today uh, through the Brandenburg Gate or down down uh, Fifth Avenue. Gate, is it, is it Fifth, Fifth Avenue, Avenue in, in New York, New York and uh, what's it? Up Horse Guards Parade in, the, in London. Is it? Yeah, the round the well, uh, past Buckingham right. Palace yeah. as you turn yeah. here to the finish line. I know. Yeah. And it's a great marathon. Oh, there are. There really are. But well, I'm not trying to be a favourite here. But uh, look at this. Just look at the finish here. Absolutely magnificent. Well, what is it? Is it World Heritage or something? The Opera House one. The, the youngest the World youngest Heritage. Yeah. Listed. And obviously, then the, you look across well, the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Just behind that, it's it's a pretty spectacular place to finish. Look at that. Take that shot in. We get to appreciate it. We haven't run, but uh, I'm sure, I'm sure <laughs> they're enjoying the moment. At least you have, though. <laughs> you know what the uh, the pain is being experienced out there at the moment, but then also the jubilation and uh, the wonderful camaraderie, the feeling, as you can see, some of them uh, with the lighter-coloured bibs, uh, green and yellow bibs, and that is the uh, family run. 4Ks, terrific. The strollers being walked, and uh, great. What an education for some of these young children. And the temperature would be pretty good to be out in the in the family walk, I would think. Yeah, walk and run and do it with the family, be terrific. There's the happy happy athletes walking away with their medals, just uh, to prove the point when they get back to their mates that it was a, they've achieved what they had to do. How long did you leave your medal on for, Steve? I've still got it on now, yeah, Steve. I've still got it on now. Yes, free entry to lots of places. 
and your reputation. Free coffee at home anytime. Rightly like so. <laughs> yes. Our men's winner, and congratulations to Elijah Kemboy of Kenya. This is our second place podium and third on the podium also as well. So well done. Our one, two, three, and our women's winner, Mercy Kabaris of Kenya, making it a double for the Kenyan nation. Chip two. Also Kenyan athlete in there as well. And what a magnificent effort. So rounding out, there's our top three of both the men's and also the women's. And speaking of tops, in the 10 kilometer event, Kevin Batt recorded a race record 30.14, which is terrific. And Celia Sullihan, a 33.25, breaking the race record held by our own Eloise Wallace. Yeah. <laughs> So and that's Kev, both Sydney siders. Oh, see, you have been up uh, north out of New, out of uh, Coffs Harbour at Grafton, but back in Sydney, and obviously we'll remember Celia Sullivan for her great running at the Commonwealth Games, and that's a good run by Kev. He'd be happy with that. So a couple of good Australian victories in the 10k fast running, 30 and 33 minutes. Celia Sullivan, certainly the. You know, Future bright, bright lights of Australian distance must have, uh, at the moment. Must have had a, a bit of a help, maybe from the wind, that strong wind at certain parts for the 10k, whereas you know the marathon perhaps not as much. Maybe, yeah. You know, he might be not sure there might be a little bit of downhill mm. in the course as well. If you're coming over the Harbour Bridge, yeah. I think there might be a little bit of downhill in the course. So quite a fast 10k course. Look at the participants, supporters, family, friends, people finishing, people jubilant. Some will be disappointed with times others will be absolutely over the moon so it is a sea of emotions and obviously so much color as we wait for the presentations to our men's marathon winners and involved in the presentations jan swinho from athletics australia vice president and also brett Wynn, the chief information officer for blackmores so congratulations you can see our one two and three and on the final step will be elijah kimboy from Kenya, who took out this year's the 18th edition of the Blackmores Sydney Running Festival. Congratulations, Elijah Kemboy. He's already talking, has spoken about uh, coming back next year and says that uh, that is what he's looking to do. It's a great effort there. So, Kenya and Uganda featuring. Very strongly, along with Ethiopia as well. There's our time, 2.13.37 to Kemboy. Over the Yako and also the Hanu in 2.16.25. Yeah, good time really in the end, wasn't it? 2.13.37. We weren't expecting that early on. Steve was saying it's, uh, it's going to be a bit slower, but he must have come home pretty hard over that last half of the course, even though he did most of the work. So it was almost a great solo run from Ken Boyd, and he's got to be proud of the fact that he's come away with the win. And Jeffrey Eggleston, that's a good run. I thought he was struggling a bit early, so he's held on really well. It's good running. The Sydney Opera House, just magnificent pictures as part of our broadcast right around the globe. And Eloise Wellings has caught up with our women's winner. I'm down here at the finish with the women's marathon winner, Mercy Cabarrus. Mercy, how was it for you to hit today? Uh, the course was not, uh, the course was good, but uh, I didn't get uh, somebody to push, me, to push me. Yeah, so you were third here last year, and obviously it, you must be ecstatic to get the win here today. It's slightly slower than last year, about two minutes. Do you think the win played a part? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy because I won, but last year I, I did number three. But today was hard to me right. to, to push the time. Right, and what's next for you? Next, next race, I think uh, until January. Sure. We hope to see you here next year again. Well done, Mercy. Thank you. Thank you. What a great result. Mercy Kabaris from Kenya, our winner of the Women's Blackmore Sydney Marathon as part of the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival.
And there's Mercy crossing the line and did just clutch a little bit the right hamstring mm. as she finished up. So she might have been running under a bit of duress on the way through, I would suggest, Monas. Yeah, just creeping up a little bit, I think. Interestingly, though, she said that you know, if she had had a couple of people out mm. there pushing, you might have been able to run a little bit quicker. They're very focused on that course mm. record. That's often, as a time, that's what you would look at. If you're invited to a race, then that's what you look at. You look at it and say, oh, yeah, well, that's in my ballpark. So she's just outside there. And as I said, uh, Jan Swinho of Athletics Australia, the Vice President, and also Brett Wynn, Chief Information Officer for Blackmore, is involved in the presentations. And here is our podium for the women's event. And we just heard a moment ago from Mercy Kabaris from Kenya, who is getting top step on the podium and a generous round of applause for Mercy as well. It's a terrific shot, isn't it? And what a backdrop for it as well. So that is one of the great photos. And any time, as you said, Monty's, you're standing on the podium, that's a good day it's of a business. It's a good day, yeah, but sure is. And again, we see uh, our results there. And Kabaris, 231, Jep to 232, and uh, Zanesh Getachu, or as it was on her bib. Durgo from Ethiopia. 233 and they're 226 226 and 227 marathon runners so interestingly they're all basically five minutes exactly from their personal best so that's that played out is that exactly as it as we you'd expect and alamayu there in in fourth place probably struggled a bit congratulations to mercy kabaris as the runners continue to cross the line here at the opera house the forecourt as part of the Blackmore's Sydney Running Festival. Just magnificent scenes as we can see all the way back through the harbour as it winds its way through the CBD. I was going to say, you, you, you look a bit closer, Ian, you might find your other half is in there somewhere. She's been out racing today, hasn't she? She has been indeed. And uh, I think seeing the girls certainly enjoy the 10k. She didn't catch that ferry. She actually did run, did she? <laughs> she sure. did. It's good to hear. Not sure that... what sort of rehydration is going on <laughs> at the moment. But... Oh, no, it's a, it's a wonderful atmosphere the finish here and people do stay around it's beautiful weather and catching up with uh, family there is that ferry and one of the ferries coming in from manly or over at taronga zoo as we saw earlier one of the world's great harbors all the families there just enjoying lapping up the atmosphere as they come towards that sydney opera house and as we said the uh, informal gathering area just to the top where everybody can just sit down and relay the tales of how wonderful they were during the race yep you're always better after aren't we yep, we're always definitely. much better run after the event than i was than always a lot better during. afterwards yes. than during and, definitely. and we still are getting better every year touching their water bottles rehydrating after that's good a lot of care taken in making sure that uh, every of the uh, every one of the athletes as well looked after throughout the whole of the course. We saw, saw before so many volunteers helping out, making this a terrific success. 300, I think, 33 tables which put out for drinks. Yep. 9,000 sachets of goo. I mean, the statistics are just mind-boggling, really. And that has to be organised absolutely 100% perfectly. It's often the things you don't notice that are, are so important in events. So. Yep. I mean, if, if you're running, it. if you're running, and you can't find a water station, and you're in trouble, you are in serious trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Medical people will be out on the course as well, so anyone having difficulty, they'll make sure they um, attend to them very quickly. All part of the logistics of a, a big city marathon. We gloat about the beautiful location, but it takes work and effort and support from so many levels of government and organisations to allow us to indulge. Great crowds lining the barricades. Well, they're all probably watching to see with their, you know, their partner, their son or their daughter coming right, through. You know, it's a big occasion for families here today, especially in this Good particular job. event. And you see dad and daughter going through. Let me get your 
And if you're just joining us on a Sunday morning here in Sydney, that is our men's winner, Elijah Kimboy. And our female winner, also from Kenya, Mercy Kabaris. Great effort, our podium there, one, two, and three. Wonderful smiles, jubilant scenes, and iconic structures in and around Sydney Harbour, including the Sydney Harbour Bridge, the ferries, and look at that forecourt. Just so much activity going around. People catching up, meeting up. As you said, Steve Monaghetti, sometimes you start together with the best intentions. Someone's feeling good, someone's not, and so you end up running your home line. And there will be crowds of people coming in here for the next couple of hours, and there'll be a real atmosphere and uh, a lot happening down here. Of course, it is sanctioned by the Guinness Book of Records. As we can see, our family runners coming across the line. That's the walk or run, whatever you'd like to do. 4Ks there. Something for everyone here, including a couple of these guys who are trying to get into the Guinness Book of Records for running marathons in costumes. I'm at the finish line with Andrew. Andrew has just broken the Guinness World Record for the fastest man dressed as a monk. How do you feel? Yeah, good. Look, it was really good fun. I love running marathons, but uh, first one in fancy dress. And it was the crowd, two people got down and knelt in front of me and crossed themselves. So yeah, it was really good fun. Great atmosphere out there. Oh, you would have been nice and warm on the starting line, but I imagine at the finish line, you would have been very, very warm in that. Yeah, it's not that hot today, but this is, it's the wind was the worst thing. The gown wasn't the most aerodynamic, but um, yeah, look, I had a 15 minutes in the bag, so I just had to grind it out to get the record. It was fun. Yeah, so you break the record by over 15 minutes? Yeah, nearly 20 minutes, I think. So, yeah, the course is pretty quick, actually. It was all right. So, yeah. <laughs> well done. What are you going to get dressed up in next year? Um, I think that's it, to be honest. I've got to go and beat my PB instead next year. But, yeah, that was uh, I did, you know, raise some money for charity and had a good, good fun, but we'll take it seriously next year, I think. <laughs> good work. See you again then. You wonder whether there's some divine intervention, Mon, as you would have called that in at some stage. Yeah. You, I, think, I think he named it. He said that he, his money was on the monk, and yeah. I think, you, yeah, you came through again, Mon. Yep. Well, and raising money for charity, which is terrific that uh, they would also do that along the way and come back next year, I think, and have a red hot go. So, well, nearly, everyone's a winner. Nearly $20 million has been raised for charity across the journey. Uh, Breast Cancer Network Australia and Beyond Blue, the chosen charities for this year. And we know that 80 plus other charities for a lot of these people that are raising money for uh, other charities that are personal to them as well. So look, just a terrific fundraising exercise. Terrific, obviously, for these people to be able to get out and do this sort of thing on a, on a Sunday morning as well as we see runners continue to come across the line from the half marathon, from the family run and also from the bridge run as well. So 37,000 291 people. That's the official statistic who managed to get out of bed on a Sunday morning nice and early to be here. And as we can see from around the globe. Indeed, an international event now. The Chinese, Chinese women there who are celebrating. Yeah, it looks like they've had a good run. That's good. Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. Congratulations to you. A lot of people still out on the course, but for us... No, seeing the victories in those events earlier, it's been a great day. Let's recap how it unfolded because there'll be plenty of people just waking up and joining the Network 10 broadcast, and this is how it got underway. So you can see plenty of athletes there. The Archibald Fountain, big part of it is the runners made their way out, and... Uh, you can see there, that was a great result. Benny St. Lawrence taking the win there. I love his number, 10,000. 10,000, yeah. Australian 10,000 metre record holder. Yeah. <laughs> Linda Martin there, female winner. The Mario Brothers <laughs> heading across the line as well. And look, aren't they great scenes? No matter whether you're in the podium or not, just to get it done, legend of the sport, Kurt Fernley, one of our elite wheelchair athletes heading off. There he comes. Man of the moment. What a great... That's, I think that's his number 12 victory, is it? Yeah, I think so. Chasing 11. Loves and... it here, his favourite event. And Eliza O'Connell winning the women's. And, of course, we got underway. As, as we've said, you get the opportunity to cross the bridge no matter which event you are doing. And that's certainly a marvellous 
invitation to be able to come here to Sydney to, to enjoy it. If you want to do it, the sydneyrunningfestival.com.au. sydneyrunningfestival.com.au. There's our men's winner and there's our women's winner crossing the line. But entries for 2019 now open. I think the story of the day, the uh, well, the Africans all on the dais. Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia in the men. Kenya, Kenya, Ethiopia in the women. And a Kenyan double, I think, it would be uh, the story of the day. And it's a pretty good running. The family fun run, of course, is a huge part of it as well. And we can see our winners for the family fun run. Around the corner, she came and Imogen Stewart, a terrific effort. So well done to Imogen, winning the family fun run as well. First overall there, daughter of Belinda Martin. That's right, correct. <laughs> talent, oh, there is a real talent. Very talent. Uh, yeah, Super yeah, talent. Yeah, yeah. Imogen, great future. Well done to uh, Imogen. That is a, a genuine talent as well. So that just about brings us to a close on behalf of Steve Monaghetti, Steve Ovet, and Eloise Wellings, as well as our production crew. Great sponsors, Destination New South Wales and Blackmoors, of course, have been in for the long haul. Ian Gates, Jason Jenkins and Wayne Larden as well, our production and organisational team. It's been a marvellous day. I'm Ian Cohen. Have a great Sydney Sunday from Sydney.